Uh, we lie. Uh, we lie. Seems good. Let's continue with space exploration, where we are nope. pretty much nope. Bilbo, <laughs> good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, we're mostly finished with this outpost, unless we want to get uh, Immersite, which we do. So we've got a couple more blocks to build before we get going. We've also got a bunch of um, efficiency modules to build still. Actually, let me steal these two. Wait, nope, nope, bring them back. Get... Let me steal these ones. And prioritize putting efficiency modules in the most energy expensive machines. Fantastic. Uh, and then we'll run our module inserter over these again. Apparently I need to reconfigure it. Uh, let's see, atmospheric condenser, not waterless. Two efficiency modules. And go. Perfect. Bat boy not so slim. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. How did it go last night? I missed the last hour or so. Um, pretty well, I think. Um, I was a bit slower than I needed to be because I thought, oh, I just need a few more items. I'll just handcraft. No, no. The scale was not where I thought it was. Um, I should have set up automation for some of these things sooner. But uh, we're nearly finished with the core part of this outpost. We've got the oil to make the rocket fuel. Uh, we've got the ice drop-off to make water, uh, to make oil to fuel the trains and make light oil to make the liquid rocket fuel. We're building a system to actually use the excess petroleum um, instead of just venting it all um, for electricity. And... Did you end up double, double doubling Vulcanite? Double doubling. Uh, well, we've got two rail blocks to process the Vulcanite. One of them doesn't have prod modules yet, so I've got that as a lower priority drop off. Um, it doesn't seem to be doing all that much. In fact, neither of them are doing all that much right now, actually. So we're definitely not bottlenecking on processing the Vulcanite core fragments. Uh, it looks like we're actually bottlenecking on mining the Vulcanite core fragments now, which is not what I was expecting and kind of good. So yeah, we should be getting approximately 19.649 uh, Vulcanite core fragments per second. Um, and all of that is getting processed with varying degrees of efficiency. Can I get it in a, a second time? Name in base? Sure. Do you want it here? On uh, Granite's? Bilbo? You didn't double it again then. Prods would help. Uh, doubling would make more sooner, which gets you Vulcanite for prods. Uh, yeah, that's why I... That's why I doubled the processing. Because we were bottlenecking on that, not the actual mining, which we're finally... We're not... We're not bottlenecked on cargo rocket sections, liquid rocket fuel, or processing. We're actually bottlenecked on the the core fragment drills, which is kind of good, I guess. I mean, you decide where you're... If, if your bottlenecks are where you want them to be, I would call that a win. Alright, so you want the name here. Bill... Just Bilbo? Or you want the number? Fantastic. <laughs> See those drive-by builds? Nice. The numbers as well. Six, seven, five, six. Okay. Uh, 
that right? Looks good. Let me check it off the list. There we go. And there goes another rocket. Very nice. And here comes supplies so that we can keep launching rockets. Fantastic. Alright, uh, we only have a few more, in fact two more gas power plants to go here. Uh, I need like 40 multi-cylinders, which we've mostly got. Let's just decon this now. Get rid of all of it. And turn on my personal logistics. There we go. So, I think it was six per second. Oh wait, it depends on the fuel value, doesn't it? Uh, let's see. On Hagen, we burn biomethanol, which has a fuel value of... 750 kilojoules. Um, this can do 4.5 megawatts. Therefore, it's consuming at a rate of 6 per second. 6 times 750 is 4,500. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, depending on how much energy we get out of petroleum, 900 kilojoules. Which means this is actually not enough. Still. Uh, if Because I based it on each one of these would burn 6 per second. Let's just let some through. And see how fast this burns. Oh, 6 per second. Which means... What? Consumption... F oh, rate calc says 6, but it's actually 5. It says right there, consumption 5 per second out of 6. And now it's not consuming because of our accumulators are full. Okay. Um, I think I'll probably just not worry about consuming all of this. Wow, that's a lot of stuff in my inventory. Um, I don't know, I might make one more row of these. Let's see, 5 times 21. Uh, 105 petroleum per second. Uh, that should comfortably be able to consume all of the excess petroleum without wasting it, um, theoretically. Uh, and then if it gets to there, whatever. Um, I want it to com to be able to consume faster than the petroleum is produced because sometimes it's not going to be consuming because if we can provide our power with solar and the accumulators are full, they're just not going to activate. Did you want to turn off petroleum cracking? Uh, yeah, we're not actually... Oh. Yeah, probably should, huh? Which means I don't need... Um, 12 of these chemical plants. Whoops. Did I copy-paste that from Granis, though? I did. Which means most of those are a waste of time. Um, whoops. Well, they're never active anyway, because petroleum's always full and light oil is always not. Whoops. needing these either. Might be needing that one. 
Wait, what was that? Oh, it just looks different because of the shadow. And we don't need half these pumps either. Oh, except they're all touching each other. I'll just leave them. Um, they consume zero power regardless. Granis is sending petrol, but other planet deleted them? Um, Granis has to delete it as well, because uh, petroleum is actually saturated, like really saturated on Hagen. Um, even though we priority pick up where it came from Granis. Because ever since we started doing, uh, what's it called again? Uh, coal filtration. Uh, we basically turn crude oil directly into petroleum and coal. Um, we've had no shortages of petroleum ever since. Although this one's looking thinner than usual. Um, but no, petroleum is... Yeah, that one's a priority pickup, so that's not that surprising. Petroleum in the regular oil processing areas is really full. Meant the chem plants were removed on the Iridium planet. Oh, okay. Iridium. Was that Gibbel? Yes. Uh, where are our chemical? Here they are. Yeah, I remember this. Oh, I could actually just copy paste this. And I don't have to go through the trouble of carefully redoing this part. If we don't want to have all those... Um, I'm blanking on the word. It, mean, it, it starts with S and it means extra, unnecessary, superfluous. Words are hard. Brain is tired. Well, it's not actually... My brain's not actually particularly tired. It's my body at the moment. Uh, let's see. Hopefully I'll be able to think a bit more clearly today after a little while. And uh, Fraser K, if I didn't say so, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Come to think of it, you usually say welcome, welcome yourself. Green wire is missing in the middle. Oh no. Uh how did how did we do it over here? We had a robo port as an excuse. Uh for that to get across. Okay. What's missing over here? One, two, three, four, five. Uh, we already made one, two, three, four, five. Alright, so that's our handcrafting queued up to finish this. I'm actually still in the robot network here. Um, how many more... How many more of these do we need? Oops. need 81 efficiency modules. We've got 67. And we're out of plastic. Because we're out of coal. Our coal was finite. It was just from picking up rocks and stuff. Uh, we need literally, like, a stack or two of coal to finish this, I believe. Or maybe a few stacks. So, I think I'll go get that by picking up rocks. How much have I got? One stack? Two stack? two and a half. That might just do it. Can't be bothered doing the math, to be honest. On Gibble, it used a robot pod, indeed. 
Um, come to think of it, I still need to... Oh god, I probably have to handcraft a bunch of ropopods. Or crafting of any kind a bunch of ropopods. It's a little bit of a pain just because we need 50 bloody small electric motors, a whole stack for each ropopod. And half a stack of concrete, as it turns out. Um, I do have a little bit of stone brick lying around as well. Give me that. No, give it back. Actually, why don't we just move this over here? And I noticed this train came here for solid fuel. What's the provide stack threshold here? One. So it asked for all of the solid fuel, and then some of the solid fuel got put somewhere else. No doubt. Uh, you may go. Let's pick up the rest of these rocks, actually. Give me the trees slash rocks only whitelist. And this is nothing but stone, actually. There's ten coal up here. Oh, that's a bit better. Let's go get it. Wait, turn my log G back on. Alright, we should get a stack of stone brick in here pretty soon. Uh, in the meantime, I'll dump this over here. We really just need a handful of concrete. I just need to make a few roboports so that we've got um, a wider range around our cargo landing pads for when the rockets crash. Twitch has problems 15 minutes to load channel. Yikes. Well, I did start uh, five or ten minutes later than usual, so hopefully you didn't miss that as much. Uh, Talem Grandmaster, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Apart from the Twitch troubles, I suppose. Um, give me those rocks. Oh, oh, no, spicy rocks, spicy rocks. Oh, the bots actually put more... Look at that. They're grabbing uranium and putting more of it into my hand. I didn't know it would work that way. I guess the player's hand is like a separate inventory slot. It's kind of how that works. So I guess there was a media in there somewhere. We're just going to keep holding onto this hot potato until we can put it away. Uh, but yeah, that gives us a couple more stacks of coal. Should be more than enough to get our efficiency modules. I saw my bots fly over that way. I'm going to wait for them. We have less than a stack of coal remaining. Uh, huh. One coal makes two plastic. Two plastic makes one of these, right? No, two plastic make... So one coal makes four electronic components, which is almost... is 80% of one efficiency module. And we needed like 50 to 100. So, yeah, that should be enough. To finish the job. Apparently these didn't get re-requested. Atmospheric condenser, efficiency module. What do you call that? Wait, these ones are... Whoa, that's weird. They all count as waterless, because I copy-pasted them from, um, from a waterless planet. Fascinating. I didn't think it would work that way. 
uh, which means some of these don't have the request for efficiency modules. I wonder if that means we could copy paste. Wait, what? Hold on. Oh no, this planet is waterless. I forgot. Never mind. That's why we have ice over here. Dup. And the uh, module inserter was not looking for waterless atmo condenser. That's your, there's your problem. Okay. Okay. Don't. It's fine. I'm just just a little slow today. Don't worry about it. It is indeed a waterless planet. Okay, I think we literally just need a handful more efficiencies, right? Yep. That's a done. Fantastic. So now our power should be looking pretty cozy. Uh, and there shouldn't be too much downtime for the poor mining drills. Let's see. Air, poor fragment B, barrel. Hmm. It's following the day-night cycle, uh, let's say more aggressively than I thought. It's fine. I still think we should be pretty careful, like, accumulated charge has to be greater than 80% if we're going to keep drilling. Place the fuel generator things. Uh, up here. There we go. Wait, what? Oh, we're still hand crop. Jeez, that's slow. There's two more to go. <laughs> Uh, and we need a bunch of... Wait, how many quarry drills did I bring? Oh, no. Uh, what does it take to make a quarry drill? Two stacks of big electric. Rare metals? I didn't bring rare metals. I think that's one and a half stacks of steel plate. Fifth of a stack of processing unit. Um, we might just have to forget about setting up imasite mining on this planet for this trip. Because I'm not waiting around for another resupply rocket. Um, I think we'll just... Oh, this is already full. Uh, we're going to Hagen. And we're going to have to make a drop-off for Hagen. Let me just double-check. This is on launch trigger manual. Good. Um, and yeah, I think we'll make this barrel. Barrel. Oh yeah, I can just type bracket barrel. That's a good way to find the core fragment. Uh, let's see. Bracket B. Fantastic. Bracket B. And this here is... Could be barrel coming from landing pad. This is erudite. Fantastic. Let's double check this while we're here. Seems a good core fragment erudite. Uh, blacklist barrel core fragment. Nice. And a train is coming. I just saw that go red. Even more 
Falcon tonight. Fantastic. Retro refresh. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, what was that mod again that allows for blueprint building? It is indeed editor extensions. Thank you, Fraser. You can turn off pers turn on and off personal tab. Yeah, it's settings, mod settings, and then the per player tab. Uh, and it's the last setting underneath editor extensions. And it'll tell you with a mouse over, you might want to change this setting as well, depending on if you want to be able to cheat or not. Um, may as well keep making efficiency modules here. Uh, Knikivdlob, all Viking, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. Uh, could I put this in here? There we go. And, oh, we still need to place these. It will eat your personal robo ports. Yeah, make sure your personal robots, uh, your personal robots rather, make sure you turn it off and all of your bots have come back before you. Basically, what it's doing is kind of like teleporting you to this surface, um, but it also switches to editor mode so you don't actually have a body, um, and then it kind of teleports you back to where you were. Um, if your bots are out, they will get teleported with you. But not back. How's the factory? Haven't been able to follow on the weekends? Uh, factory's going pretty well. We are just finalizing our, what is it, third outpost? We got Granis, Gibil, and now Exorion. Hagen being our main planet, and Nalvis sort of doesn't count. Partly because I can't be bothered going back to fix it yet. Uh, the main problem with it... Oh. Did it fix itself? Yeah. Uh, the main problem with it is a couple of bugs in the um, storage slash get rid of excess stuff from core mining system. Um, yeah, we keep ending up with all of our trains queued up and not doing anything useful. I don't have a lot of trains in this system, so that doesn't help. There's actually... I think there's actually, like, two or three or four cargo wagon double trains in this whole thing. Oh, no, here they are. Speaking of which... Yeah, see, when we get a problem like this, um, it's actually... What the hell? You're looking for stone from here? How are you... What? 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 How? Huh? What? 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 Why did I do this? Oh. Hold on, what? I remember. I didn't have this combinator. And then I had to try and figure out a way to make this work remotely, and we're borrowing this combinator's settings, except I think I just connected it to the wrong thing, or didn't know? Why are we using red wire here? That should... Oh, because I can't reach... I can't reach from here to here. Okay. How about... No? Um... How can I give this one... Provide stack thresholds and stuff. And this one... Don't say that there's stone here. What a conundrum. Um... Provide threshold 50k? I think I, I think I know the answer. We're just going to do it like that. These two can share a constant combinator for settings. And this one is just the settings for over here. <laughs> and our trains are not going to come here for stone. Uh, which is what all of these trains appear to be doing. Uh, 
Uh, that's got to be... Yeah, that's by far more than half of our trains. Tied up there. Our cargo wagon trains. Well, that might help a little bit. Are there any more queuing up for stone? Doesn't look like it. Just waiting their turn to leave. Okay, so let's double check this a bit more thoroughly this time. We've got... Provide threshold 50k, long trains only. I mean, short trains are fine. Where fluids are concerned, it really doesn't matter. And that just connects there and there. That's fine. And then this just connects over here and here, but that's okay. That, that should work. Have you considered moving the landing pads to the crushing blocks? Landing pad with the name works kind of like vanilla trains. Uh, yeah, but it doesn't, uh, it doesn't adapt to changing conditions later on as well. Like, when I stop using cargo rockets, I have to redesign, and I don't want to do that. Not steel mate, and love Kelly, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. What, 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 indeed. Lots of what, what, what on this channel sometimes. Um, Alright, heavy oil is now able to escape. Not that we're using heavy oil for anything, actually, on this planet. Um, That should be everything. And if it isn't... We have a construction train, which I keep forgetting to set up. Energy absorber, fantastic. Personal roboports, just to extend the range even further. That's going to be quite the drain on our power, I think. It's still... Accumulator charge is still going up. We did it at the right time. Maybe send a rocket with roboports, drills, and spare robots? Uh, we don't really need the spare robots. I'm not going to go over 50 Logibots. And I'll leave 50 construction bots here. Which is... Well... I guess they're all going to end up in the construction train. Which should be fine, actually. I, I should just put all of the... Let's put almost all of the robots in the construction train. I want a handful for... Um... Oh, I didn't think of that. I didn't think of that. If the, robo if the robots from in the construction train pick up scrap when there's a crash, uh, it's going to end up in the train. But luckily, because there's only one cargo wagon, we can actually set up a precise unloading system. Um, so whatever's not supposed to be in the train is going to get taken out. So let's see. We need to read train contents, which we're already doing. That's on the red wire. Um, we need to subtract... Everything that's supposed to be in the train, which is this green wire over here. Although it's also got times negative one what's in the train. Oh, perfect. So this green wire right here already tells us everything that's not supposed to be in the train. Although, well, it's a negative of what's not supposed to be in the train. Um, but it's got construction robots included there, because we load those in a different way. Um, hmm. I could just 
make a little exception with another constant combinator for that. Uh, that doesn't touch this logic. So, let's see. If I put iron gears, negative 100 iron gears. Okay. So if we... Maybe I just don't want the... What? What? Whoops. There we go. Uh, maybe I just don't want this times negative 1. Yeah, I want what's in the train minus what's supposed to be in the train. This sets request, which means this red wire is already what's supposed to be in the train. Okay, so arithmetic. Uh, if I can find a spot for it. Each times negative one. Output each. Uh, we're just going to steal this red wire, and so we have a negative of what's supposed to be in the train, plus a positive of what's actually in the train, and then we're going to set filters, whitelist, uh, I think I should just go stack size 1 for this, instead of needing any extra combinators for the logic. This isn't going to be needed. Like, overall, the throughput required for this is going to be very low. Do we not have any... There we go. Uh, stack size 1. I mean, if it overdoes it, I guess it'll just get taken out of here, put back in here, and put back into the train. So, never mind the stack size, I suppose, unless it ends up making things go in circles. Which I fully expect to happen with the bots until I add a little exception for that. Uh, let's see. Construction robot. Negative 50. So now we should get set filters whitelist. Uh, we need to add the contents of the train. And I think just to make it clear that these are like different sources of information, we'll do the red wire from there and green wire from here. Cool, so now we're going to remove the gear wheels. And that's it. And I imagine if I put in extra rail... We're going to output the rail. Um, it'll probably overdo it a little bit because of the stack size, and then we'll put some more in. I'm fine with that, actually. That wasn't too difficult. Um, I'll definitely make that a standard for whenever we do short construction trains. Uh, so now it doesn't matter if, um, if all or any or most of our construction bots are uh, in the train. If a ship crashes in range and these bots pick up the stuff, they'll bring it back into the cargo wagon and the scrap will be emptied out of here. Speaking of which, before we do go, let's put in a recycling facility. I need some concrete. Uh, I also need concrete for... Oh, that only goes to 20. Uh, how about this? I also need concrete for... Um, oops. What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, for the roboports that I'm going to have to spam to extend the range in case of a crashed ship. Do we not have any more? There we go. That should be concrete fully automated. And just go to like 10 stacks, I guess. Should be more than enough. 
Okay, how much power do we have spare? Well, during the day, how much is spare? We're about to find out. It's a very short day though, so... We're actually only just reaching the point where the accumulators are full. So we don't we can't really spare anything else. One more drill would like would would probably give us less uh core fragment per second overall because of our power management. Uh but on paper for a few seconds we've got a hundred megawatts spare per day. Wait, why do we have a much bigger... Why do we have a much bigger area under the graph that's free compared to yesterday? Who knows? The petrol hasn't started to generate power yet. That's a good point. It'll take a long time to do it because we're only doing that when this gets full. Okay, so I, I think we've got everything in place. Let's have a look back on Hagen and set this up as... Bracket B. Oh, what was that? Star black, gear black. That's cool. Um, what was my naming convention here? Barrel CF. Is it B-E-R-Y-L? Yes, it is. Fantastic. Okay. Barrel CF. 98% cargo safety. Lovely. Can we improve that already? Uh, we cannot. Not without astroscience. All right. Um, packed. We've only got 58 packed cargo rocket sections, which tells me I haven't... Either I haven't set up or... This hasn't launched yet because it's looking to put another 26 stacks of stuff in first. So once we go through, probably once we launch a rocket, um, there's going to be a resupply back here. Exorion Mole. Uh, target Exorion Mole. Seems a good. And... We've got the unpacking. Okay, I guess we just expand the roboports. Give me that concrete. That's only 60. That's not too bad, I guess. Wait, is concrete still working? Yeah, it is. Uh, give to me the copious amounts of small electric motor. We don't appear to have any. Uh, how many more roboports do I really need? I mean... Uh, around this, we really don't have decent range. What does it take to make small electric? It's just copper and iron. Let's just spam them out. It's cog. We've actually got a million cogs to spare already. And copper cable. Do we even have copper? We do not have copper. Is there any copper on this entire planet? I actually don't see any. 
Don't tell me we have to send copper for this. Oh, here's some. 17k. Is that actually all of the copper on this entire rock? It really could be. Oh, we found more crude oil. Uh, I should probably go get that, honestly. Because there's so little on the whole planet. Okay, let's, let's, let's mark that before I lose track of it. And our copper is close to our crude oil down here. Copper in inventory? Ah, uh, tree. Wait, I don't actually have... There we go. Oh, we are making copper cable already. It's all going into... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's make a mine anyway. Uh, a lazy mine. To the rescue. Is that going to cover it all? I think it actually is. One click mine. Fantastic. Alright, let's go build that sucker. Use factory search for check for copper. Good point. I forgot we could do that. It doesn't work for biters, but it does work for resources on the ground. And I forgot I put all of my robots away. Oops. Let's be a little bit careful. And this goes here. This goes here. Rail. Uh, LTN station. Substations. I can't believe we've got full coverage with just one mine. That's beautiful. Uh, where's my rail gone? There we go. Don't mess up the loaders. And up we go. Alright, what's the bet there's more copper on this planet than just 17k? My money is on no? Okay. Uh, that seems fine. Alright, factory search. Uh, is it entity? Copper? Whoops, that's iron. There's lots of iron. We've got four. Uh, there's... 1.4k <laughs> next to this coal mining drill. 349 way out here, and it's all spread out, and 7.4k 7. 7. over here. Does that even count? <laughs> Technically? Let's get some power down this way. I win. <laughs> Congratulations. Did we configure this right? Yeah, we did. Fantastic. Search for more oil too. That's a good point. Let's um let's just tap the oil that we've already found first. And I'll grab this a blueprint right here. Even though that's a little messed up. Oh, whoops. There we go. Gotta be a little bit more careful with that snap too. And, you know what, I want to pick up some bots before I do this. Let's 
let's steal half the bots from... Let's steal most of the... Let's steal all of the bots from the construction train. And you know what? I might just ride it out there so it, it can bring some rail for me. And we get a ride. Oop. And manual. Now we do the Wallace and Gromit. Uh, we move the big power pole. We change this back to a chain signal. We put some appropriate signals down here. And... Is that not powered? Why is it not powered? That, that should reach, right? Apparently not. There we go. Give us some more rail. Am I out of cliff explosives? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, we don't have any more cliffies. I don't want to go make cliffies. Uh, that means we have to make explosives. Grenades are easy. Barrels are easy. Explosives are... I can't see it here because I can't handcraft them. Um, explosives. Coal and sulfur. Alright. Let's bring our bots back with this trick. And I'll just continue this for now. What is our oil? Up here? We got through almost the entire planet on, what, 20 or 40 cliff explosives? So I didn't notice that we even needed them. Uh, let's go... Whoops. Over here. And... Could I just steal a oil pickup? How about this? Seems a good. Can that actually just connect directly? Almost. Oh, it probably could if I moved it back one pair of tiles. That's a pretty good fit. And this one goes here, and this one is going to go like this. Very, very neat. Substation, ah, oh, one off. Okay. How about, could we even fit this with a medium? We could. How about big pole, that doesn't work. Okay, big ball down here. Oh, that's surprisingly good. Connect like so. Crude oil provider. There's the settings. And we need to make sure our train can change lanes and fit in here. Ban. Fantastic. We don't even really need any more signals. Wobbly rail is not a sin. Okay. I, uh... I'm, I'm glad you agree, Razor. Very relieved to hear that. Blood sugar? Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um... I mean, I guess instead of going to, to the trouble of 
making cliff explosives just for this. There we go. We're building around nature. Perfect. Um, where's the rest of the crude oil? Uh, we got these ones, we got these ones, we got these ones, we don't got these ones. Let's, uh, mark those. We don't got these. It's going to be a little tedious, but I really do want to grab all of the oil on the planet, because it is not that much. And I hopefully want it to last until we don't need liquid rocket fuel. Alright, let's, um, let's double check that this train can get there and back again. Hold on, we don't have power. And... Alright. Why don't you drive here and then... Oh, wait, what? Huh? Well, that... That should be fine to demonstrate that the signaling works. I think there is a missing signal at the T intersection. I think it... don't think it matters with the low throughput. Uh, over here? Where well, we have just stopped moving? Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, 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 because the... Uh... Stop for a second. Uh, because the lazy mines, I build some signals into them. But not this one. There we go. Uh, now this one is upset. That should be fine. Cool, we can definitely get home with this. Um, but before we do... I might not even make another station. I'll just do a long set of underground pipes this time. Much easier than adding more rail. Where, where is it? There we go. And we'll need substation our we go. And then steel underground pipe. Up past the rail. That's a really good fit. Wow, perfect. Beautiful. Max range. Fantastic. Uh, and then we've got, I think, one, two more to add. After that one, how easy that was, I'm very tempted to just pipe this over here. I think I will do that. And we definitely won't need any cliff explosives that way. That's not an oil patch. And 
never going to fit all that under one sub. Can we do sub big pole? We can. Let's just drag it up this way. Apparently we just placed something we missed earlier. And then... Uh, how about... Down this way. That's it. And across this way. I can't see. Let's just build this out and see where it goes. Already getting prude. Where's the other one? Down here. Where are we? Much confusion. Oh, I think I see it. not connected up this way yet. And we can easily check if it's all connected. Uh, there's two ways we could go about it. Click here, we see 212k in the fluid system. Uh, 5.1k, it is not all connected yet. Uh, the other option is pipe visual. God damn it. Okay, let's go fix those. Bunk indeed. Apparently that's not connected. What? Nani? Oh, do I have to refresh it? Yeah, there we go. Okay, so this should be 200 something K, which it is. Fantastic. Beautiful. All right, and that should just leave one more outpost, I think, that we haven't made yet. Yep, just two more patches to go. I have the overlay set to on hover, which is neat. That does sound useful. Might have to have a look at those options. Ooh, we get worker robot speed in the not so distant future. Okay, yeah, you, I, I found it. You can you can stop now. Um, we're gonna need another outpost to pick this up. Let's do some highway. Wait. Oh uh, yeah, some highway up this way. Rug Stealer, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Let's copy paste this right about here somewhere. And why not make that a substation? Actually, if I move these up a couple of tiles, I can connect that directly. Uh, 
And this can go over here, I guess. Okay, rail. Uh, remove ghosts. Rail go this way. Oops. And uh, this way. And we misclick. Fantastic. Get out of here, straight rail. Oh, no. Look how close that is. About like this. We build, we run out of rail probably, we bring the construction train that we left there ages ago. And we take the rail. Fantastic. And the construction train is probably going to move forward. Wait. Oh, it can't. Uh, send it over here. We'll confirm that it can path there and get back. Which, it's out of fuel, actually. That is not the outcome that I was expecting. Out of all of the possibilities. Uh, this one has no path. Where is it going? To the iron mine? Alright, we'll deal with that in a second. So, how much solid fuel do we have? Uh, we have lots. Are we allowing short trains to pick it up? There's your problem. Should be a delivery here in just a moment. Any second now? Do we have short train in depot? We do. Are we asking for short train to deliver? One sixty stacks, yes. Yes, we are. So, what's the deal? Short train, short train, depot. Stopped at the depot, five seconds of inactivity. Oh, I know what it is. We need a stack threshold for provider. Yep, that didn't take long. Short train is going to iron. Uh, I don't think I do ask for short trains at the iron pickup, actually. Yeah, that one's long trains only. Cool mod. Oh, the pipe one? Yeah, it really is. Alright, so there's our fuel, which we thought we had sorted ages ago. Um, let's deliver some personally to the construction train. There you go. And... 21k already. Nice. So that should be literally all of the oil on the planet has been tapped. Fantastic. Alright, back to base. 
And just for the hell of it, I want to test our system of getting random stuff out of this train. Looking good. Looking very good, actually. Um, what else was I about to do? I need to give bots back to this system before I leave. So we've tapped all of the oil, none of the raw imicite. Oh, I needed some... Uh-oh, this didn't happen. We needed copper, that's why I was making that station. Uh, seems to be working. We have copper being smelted. We do not. We've got room for it. Uh, that's right, this train has no path to the iron for some reason. So what's your problem? What? Huh? Oh! The... The signal got overwritten with a belt somehow. Well, that's a simple fix. And get this iron out of here. I can't get rid of it. It's totally saturated. No! Train should be here in a second. Uh, and we might even want another cargo train. But I'm sure... Somehow? Yeah, somehow. It's a mystery. No one will ever know how that could have happened. Is the Western Oil Outpost wired up to LTN? Uh, yes. Yes, it is. It's got 200k available already. We're just not picking it up. I hope this will be picking up copper next, because it should... F yep, yep, yep. Uh, I think it'll find it as a higher priority, because we've already got the iron there. But no copper. Alright, so that'll be 4k copper. Uh, once we get five seconds of inactivity here, that, that is. Oh, wow. How? Oh, this was running off of fuel that I gave it as a one-off. And we're only now refueling it properly for the first time. Okay. Can we speed that up? There we go. It was missing in the copy-paste for Northern, but it's because the power pole was deleted. I see. This seems okay. Alright, so that should be another copper delivery, I think. Yep. Fantastic. Wait, that's the first copper delivery. Dub. It's already on its way back. I love the bulk rail looters. Nice. So I think we've got a pretty functional little outpost here now. Uh, except I haven't done the the extra robo ports. That's why we need the copper. And just how much copper do we need? Six cable equals three plate. Uh, we would need like four plate per second. We're not actually able to keep up with that. Um, unless I get it from here as well. Uh, how much plate are we doing? Two and a half per second. 
that, so not so fast. But we only need a few robopods if we do the construction mode thing. To cover everywhere that the um, cargo rockets might crash. And this one up here, I th no, we need Logi to reach there. Uh, I've kind of got a spare Roboport here. Let's move that up this way. Construction mode. Does it actually... Oh wow, I can put them further away than I th thought and keep them connected. That's good. So we'll only need a handful more, I think. Like, less than five. Also a third cable machine near the smelter. Third cable machine. Oh, there is two. That's good. So this will probably consume all of our copper, actually. Except we're still making efficiency modules. We should probably stop with that. Whoops. Think copper went into iron smelter? Uh, no? Oh, it did too. I could just make these ones copper. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait a minute. Uh, okay. Get your iron out of my face. There we go. Uh, and let's just say copper plate less than some amount. It's not actually in the robot network now. Because I turned this one into construction mode, that's why. Okay. How many... Ooh, that's going pretty quick. That's three roboports right there. We might need some concrete, though. Uh, we need steel. Fantastic. Afternoon, JP and Philip B. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, yeah, we made way more efficiency modules than we actually needed. I don't really mind. Uh, I do need the steel at the moment, actually. Put this other stuff away. Actually, it's coming back to me. Sort that out in a minute. Okay, more roboports. Fantastic. Down this general direction. Probably need a few more.
this way. Uh, Fulker, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Construction mode, that's actually too far. Uh, how much closer do I need to get it? Or do I need... I don't think I need to power it to make the lines appear, right? No, there it is. Okay. Maybe one over here and one over here. Squeeze it through that. How much closer does it need to be? Closer than this? Really? I guess that'll have to do. Gonna need one up here. Let's get some concrete and stuff. We're a little short on concrete. There we go. It was up this way, right? Yeah. Roboport is still being handcrafted. Uh, probably here would be fine. Let's see if that connects. Construction mode, too far, oh we can actually check it this way apparently, fantastic, it does copy paste with construction mode, although it didn't seem to work with the blueprints. Okay, one off, whatever, let's put it here. That coverage seems okay. Um, I could see a rocket landing over here, well, crash landing. It's not actually going to be powered, but that is at least going to reach. Evil Plot, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. And then one up this general direction. And, and furthermore, Tastic. Undead Hunter, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well also. Good morning to you. So hopefully that will cover the inevitable 7 out of 10 crashed cargo rockets when we have our 98% chance of success. Uh, once the auto handcrafting is done, that is. So we've got all of the oil on the planet tapped. We've got four mining drills. We've got ice, we've got oil, we've got liquid rocket fuel, we've got resupply of cargo rocket sections and stuff. Uh, we've got the rocket set up. 
And we've got our construction train. Got some LTN. Um, I think that's our outpost. That'll do for now. Let's leave everything that we can easily reproduce here. Um, we won't be needing the destroyer capsules. There's literally none, uh, no enemies on this planet. Um, personal batteries. I wouldn't even be able to put them in something remotely. Laser turrets aren't needed. Efficiency modules, beacons, chemical plants, assembly... Oh, I didn't make a recycling facility. Let's do that. Recycling facility. Uh, we're missing heat shielding. We don't have any heat shielding. Uh, how difficult is it to make? I think we need sulfur. Maybe I just won't worry about it. Nah, uh, eventually... On a long enough timeline, the scrap would fill up... Um... Storage. Uh... I don't believe I don't have any heat shielding. Also, there's no fuel for this poor little smelter. Are you real? I don't know. Am I? Anyone else having issues opening Factorio prints? Uh, I don't know about opening it, but that site has always been a little bit moment to moment unreliable like I would have to load a page twice kind of thing uh what was I doing oh yeah trying to figure out how hard it would be to make some heat shielding nothing loading at all oh no sulfur stone tablet steel plate Stone tablet. And sulfur is just water and petroleum. Uh, I could steal some water from up here. Give me a chemical. You know what? I should have done this a bit later. Well, no. I just forgot that I needed to do the recycling facility for a sec. Where's my chemical plant? There we go. Sulfur. And water goes here. And petroleum goes here. We literally just need a handful of sweet-smelling sulfur. Name a more pleasant odor. You can't do it. How much heat shielding do we actually need? Uh, ten. So like 80 sulfur. 1.6 stacks. Factorio Prints is a pretty terrible website. Uh-oh. Alright, I think that's everything for sulfur. Get in here. And give us that 10 heat shield. We need more stone brick. Uh, this is our only source of stone brick. Can I make an electric furnace? Yeah, I just need some stone. Uh, and then what? Oh, I need heat shielding to make the electric furnace. There we go. Sulfur. 
search just filters the current page, so you need to click through pages to find your search. Yeah. I'll have to look around for something better. Okay, we got our old-fashioned vanilla electric furnace. Where is it? There it is. Um, I guess I'll just do another requester. Stone. Factorio School has the better search, but Prince is the website to upload stuff. Okay. Uh, we have four heat shielding. All of this just for one recycling facility. How much stone do we have left? 4.1k, that's more than I expected. We don't need a continuous supply of stone. to go. Which we actually brought exactly the right amount of sulfur for. Nice. And a three. And a three. There we go. Uh, where are my big electrics? There we go. Fantastic. Um, and I kind of want the requesters for iron. And copper. But you know what? I should just request it here. Iron and copper. So if that gets in the Logi network somehow. It'll get itself sorted out. Oh. I think we've got enough copper for now. Let's switch these ones back to iron oh that's not that's not great whatever I'll just make it a passive it's fine Except this is supposed to limit itself. So we don't lose all of our storage. are good. Oh yeah, I didn't put down the recycler. Uh, here seems fine. I just leave that there. And huge container for the oil that we don't care about. Requester, active provider. And bring me the scrap. Oh. Right then. Construction bots can go in the train. 
most of them anyway. Uh, I think our robo range is sufficient for crashed rockets. I think we're ready to go home. Name one thing that we still need to do on this planet. Seems good. Taco party. Uh, boot fighter. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Is research halted or is it just super slow? Probably just super slow. Yep. It's bottlenecked on, I believe, one of these machines. This one? I think it's bottlenecked, well, definitely it's temporarily at least bottlenecked on uh, energy insight. Because we saved up a whole bunch of catalogs over here that weren't accessible to this machine. Um, but it might be the case that these can keep up regardless, I don't know. I'm really not concerned about it for now. There's nothing that I'm urgently trying to research. We're just unlocking more types of metal and stuff at this point. Um, okay, so I think that's it. I think we're going home. Um, the train got all of its robo stuff. Fantastic. And we actually came up with a new way to... Well, not a new way. It's something I considered for the first build, but I couldn't do it because we had more than one cargo wagon. But it was actually shockingly easy. Um, with no, with one additional combinator, not counting the constant, uh, to have something that outputs whatever isn't supposed to be in the train right now. Which actually means we don't really need the unloader, although it is a lot faster to reset the whole thing. Bots for the train? Yep, we got 46 bots in the train, and I left four for the, uh, the stationary... Roboport network. So that should be fine. Let's -a go home. Launch on cargo full. What a beautiful sight. And our first rocket back fails to crash. Fantastic. Let's, uh, let's take the taxi back from here. It'll already be on its way. Guy Clicky, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Probably possible. Is it possible to make a mod where cargo wagons share inventory? I don't know. It sounds like that would be challenging. It, it really it, it depends on the limitations of modding with this specific game, and I haven't done much in that area myself. Fails to crash, best kind of failure, indeed. All right, so we're back on Hagen. We have a new outpost, uh, and we know exactly what we need to work on next. Because we've got a new type of core fragment coming in, and nowhere to process it. Um, although, wait, let me get resupplied first. Uh, the first thing I'll do is actually take our still only 25 productivity modules. How are we not getting prod 2s? Uh, I think we do have prod 2s. Oh, I stopped this. 
temporarily. Well, that that would probably help. If if it had inserters. It doesn't crash, it's just rapid unscheduled disassembly. Someone's been playing Kerbal. Oh it oh hard tumbles? O H E Uh wait what? Tumbles? Tumbling satellite, there you are. I missed you for just a second. Was it designed to crash? Also hi, indeed. Uh Designed to crash reminds me of Scott Manley's video speedrunning from the the launch pad to the to the island close to the K, uh, close to the Kerbal Space Center with like about seven hundred rocket parts and a few stages. <laughs> Scott is the man single-handedly responsible for me becoming a space systems engineer. Nice. Good job, Scott. Yeah, I really liked his stuff. Especially, what was that series? The, um... I think the mod was called Interstellar. And the whole thing was breaking down towards the end, and he, like, tried to come up with some narrative reasons for that. Tumbling Satellite was seen watching other streams this night. Scandalous. Interstellar series with Kraken attacks? Yes, exactly. Alright, so it turns out we actually do have a few. Uh, we've got 2k Vulcanite blocks here, which means... Um, 40 Prod 3s that are yet to be made that we've already got the resources for. Okay, um, but for the moment, I think I'll just steal the prods that we already do have and place them in our second Vulcanite Core Fragment Processing Area. Since we're now bottlenecking on the actual mining, it and a lot of stuff is bottlenecked on... Um, did we place that? Yeah, we did. A lot of stuff is bottlenecked on Vulcanite. It behooves us to get modules in these things. I also need some speeds and efficiencies for the uh, the beacons. Well, to be honest, we probably don't really need the speeds and efficiencies right now, since we've got way more processing than necessary. Um, but yeah, we need to make a processing block for... Barrel core fragments. So let's jump into the old editor extensions. Let's delete our other stuff, which is going to take like 17 minutes because every signal re we remove makes every single train repath despite being on different surfaces. Um, I just noticed, whoops, I hope I saved that. Uh, that blueprint that we were working on yesterday before I took a break from that and did an outpost. But I'm pretty sure I did. The one with the space rail for the depot and uh, we did like a sushi belt so that we could recycle the batteries. Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Yes, control Z to the rescue. I definitely don't want to press that once once things are moving again. I believe I still have more hours in KSP than Factorio, indeed. I spent a lot of time tweaking... Uh, what was that autopilot mod called? Uh, Herbal Operating System. The last thing I was working on when I was when I last played KSP was uh, trying to build a fly-by-wire system for a VTOL, trying to set it up so you literally couldn't crash no matter how hard you tried. Fly safe, indeed. Uh, Petri Cottontail. Welcome, welcome. Good to see you again. 
Hope you're doing well. Back in the days of MechChad, indeed. The, um, what was it called? Uh, Kobol operating system was actually kind of overpowered because you had impossibly fine control over the thrust. Um, which I know, I, 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 I'm no expert about rocket systems or anything, so I'm just taking Mr. Manley's word for it, but I, 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 I find it pretty plausible, pretty believable, that real rocket engines are not actually that responsive, that you could set them to fractions of a percent of their thrust power and have a, a rocket craft hovering as if by magic in the air, just sitting there. Um, that does seem to stretch uh, the verisimilitude a little bit, just, just a tad bit. I really want to see T-Hex playing KSP2. I, I really hope it will be good and try not to think about it too hard. Um, I probably actually should have started with this blueprint. There we go. And should we or should we not steal from ourselves? Um, two questions about this build. Should we steal from ourselves using another build? And are we going to want to do multiple, multiple production steps in the same block? Which will make scaling prod modules later on, uh, different modules later on with ratios a little bit of a problem. It does not. The SpaceX Falcon landing does a suicide landing burn just before hitting the pad, as it cannot go low enough power to hover. Indeed. They have a min throttle and also spool up and down times, yeah. Fairly responsive from the videos I've seen. Interesting. But yeah, you can't just... You can't just have them hovering with an exact fraction of a percent. of its maximum thrust. All right, we're going to need some pulverizers. We are doing barrel core fragment processing. This is a very familiar shape. Zero to four core fragments, 16 barrel, one stone. Uh, what have we done before that looks like that? Cryonite is very similar, but we ended up doing some processing in the same block. Does Beryl have a horrific stack size? It actually doesn't. So I'm thinking we could just do nothing but Beryl core fragment processing in the one block this time. Cryonite has a stack size of 20. Um, Vulcanite, I think, was really bad as well. Stack size 20. Iridium or Iridite... Uh, let's see. Iridite itself has a stack size of 10, which is truly horrific. Um, yeah. But luckily this time, stack size 50 for barrel, that is quite reasonable. I think we'll just, we'll just do one production step in the first block. 55, and Guy Clicking, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I think I said hello to Guy Clicking. Well, you get two welcomes regardless. Barrel ingots stacked at 200? I don't know. What does crushed stack to? We'll find out soon enough. But fifth, stack size 50 is more than reasonable to put into a train. And if we have more than one production step in a rail block, uh, and we want it to have an upgrade path with different modules. Um, it, it's going to mess it up for later. It's going to mess up the ratios, to be clear, not anything else. Uh, so I think that'll do. And what's our rate? Uh, let me just put down some, like, fake buildings for where we want the beacons to be. 
So we're only taking in 24 per second, outputting 19... 20 something. Uh, that's going to be pretty easy to deal with. And so we've got three outputs. I think just like usual, I want vanilla core fragments and stone on the side. Uh, let's see if we can steal from ourselves for that. Fantastic. And there we go. Um, what's the input rate like? It's only two per second per machine. And output is like the same, but it's three different uh, products. So the inserters can get a bit confused, shall we say? I think I'd like to do loaders for output. And inserters for input. Nice and easy. Two, four, six. And two, four, six. And I'd kind of like these to line up. Can I move this over one tile? Do that just for balancing and for the symmetry of it. Oops. And then don't forget the wiring. need a container. Well, we don't strictly need it, but it's neater than using multiple splitters. Uh, so this is going to be uh, regular core fragments, I think. Yes. Core fragment. And this is going to be stone. And last but not least, now that doesn't quite line up perfectly. If we had one more tile, we could just put it straight in here. We're never going to pick up just barrel with a short train, right? Let's see. Barrel goes into processing, landfill, uh, a weird way to make particle stream, and matter, and that's it. I think we're fine to just have long trains picking up barrel. And this goes here. I kind of like, uh, in a way, I kind of like that the uh, the mod that fixes the belt icons doesn't know about space transport belt because I'm never going to mistake space transport belt for regular belt or vice versa. Okay, limit the front to 40 stacks. Put the back to 40 stacks. Uh, read from these and provide stack threshold 80. Long trains only. Barrel. Cor uh, wait, no, just barrel. Barrel provider. It also means we'll have a block to process barrel itself. 
um, if we ever mine barrel directly and bring it back. Um, how fast is this? 19, 24 core fragments per s We haven't given it any modules yet, though. But that's fine for the moment. We need output. I almost forgot. How about... Is it going to be fast enough with inserters? Because that would kind of look neater. I think it will. It's like... Even though it's three different types of item... Uh, it's less than two per second out. Should be easy enough. This is going to have to be a little different. Let's do underground belt. And I guess I could just have this come down here. Empty null. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I just couldn't continue Pyanodon. Don't have the mental resources for it at the moment. So I continued my Nullia save. Yikes. Yep. Everything I hear about Pyanodon sounds masochistic. Uh, oh, we need these four. Whoops. Well, that means we can make it look a bit more symmetrical anyway. Kind of like this. We can see exa exactly where that beacon belongs. And this one as well. Uh, substations. Oh, that's a good fit. That's a very good fit. Could we maybe do it like this? I think we'll need extra in the middle if we want it to be uh, if symmetrical, but that's okay. And this would go here. And then that looks fine to me. Is that actually... Oh, that is so neat. I love this. Hi, is pointless suffering change my mind? You, you heard him. There's your challenge. Uh, apparently I... If I'm only doing long trains to pick up, uh... To pick up uh, regular core fragments, then this part's not necessary, and we can just. Oh, that was also read read stopped train. We don't need that. Yeah, I should update those old builds, but yeah, as long as we limit these to forty stacks each. Also, that we know that the regular core fragments are going to be fairly slow, 2.4 per second. Uh, so having the capacity here for 120 stacks when 80 is a train load, plus what's on the belt, plus what's in here. Well, that should not be a problem. Barrel comes out this way. And let's update this mess as well. And limit both of these to 40 stacks. Seems a good. And then I want to do the same thing over here. Let's do some test input though. Bracket B is Core Fragment Barrel. Fantastic. And... Something is wrong here. Core Fragment Oh, is it just super slow because there's not actually any power? Yep. 
So the ins uh, input and output inserters should be able to keep up pretty easily. And they can. Let's just double check with the output. Oh, I forgot about the sick. Wait, no. Nope, that's actually fine. It gets to like 72% before it's done outputting. It depends on how much we get each recipe, but it looks like the, the inserter can always keep up. Cool. Now, ooh, wait, that's... That's not... Oh. I was going to say, uh, we need to check if all of the filters are going where they're supposed to. But it would help if our belts were connected first. That's uh, looking good. There it is. I'll leave that running for a minute while we duplicate it over here. Except I'll just use these output stations for the extra stuff. Uh, so... We do an unloader like this. We request a couple of train loads of barrel core fragments. 20 times 160. 3200. As a negative, because LTN is always trying to push it towards zero. Uh, and this is called Core Fragment Barrel Requester, goes to Pulverizer, makes barrel. And maybe I should also say that it makes Core Fragments in stone? Either way should be fine, copy-paste that. Let's... is this symmetrical? It is not. Flip it around. Then... This goes here. And then one tile... further in. That's where that goes. That should be right. Um... In fact, I should just be able to copy paste the whole thing, except we want these moved over, flip these, flip this whole thing around actually. Except this will be a bit different. And let's double check this is going where we think it does. Uh, so we just want... that to go through there. Looks good. How about the output for these? Looks like the inserters can keep up. Fantastic. I was going to say, I suppose it would be a bit more EPS friendly if we did stack inserters. But uh, we have long arms on this side and I'm not going to double the belts. I guess I could do loaders. I don't want to. Okay. And we don't need any of this stuff on this side. So have we done all of our stations? I believe so. Doesn't really matter if we connect here or not. Although, it'll sort of implicitly make this a higher priority if it doesn't know that 
these fragments are here, in a way. But yep, yeah, I think that is our build. Let's remove the fake beacons and the real ones as well. Can they keep up with modules? Yeah, they should. And if they can't, uh, we can easily upgrade. But um, if we're going for productivity bonus and not massive uh, power cost with speed modules, then it won't be, it won't be that much more difficult to keep up either. All right, let's a blueprint. And this is barrel processing. Step to grid eighty six twenty five one train stop things. Yes, we already removed the cheat stuff. I think that'll do it. Looks a good. And where do I keep these? Here we go. Alright, now where do we want to build it in our game? Uh, probably close to the barrel core fragment drop-off. Or pick-up, rather. If I put it here... Or here... Fragments are picked up from there, and can be dropped off here really, really quickly. Should be fine. Uh, where are we going? There's only cryonite over here, we're not going to worry about that. Right, let's get our construction train to pay a visit. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Before we do, did we... Ooh, we haven't upgraded these yet. Okay. I got a present for the construction train. These uh, vehicle roboports that I forgot about for a while. We want 16. Actually... Hmm. Personal... Yeah, we've already got regular personal roboports here. Personal roboport. There they are. One, two, three, four. And... Autocrafter should start making some more in a moment. Actually, why don't I just put the personal roboport, uh, sorry, the vehicle roboports in the middle one. And we can give that a little experiment right now. And one more. go. Uh, I'll have to wait for those to charge. Maybe we'll even make some more personal roboport. I mean vehicle roboports in the meantime. One, two, three, four. That's one more cargo wagon. Do we have any more? We have 13. Somewhere in here. Good luck. Um, is anybody... Oh, there they are. 1, 2, 3, 4. Fantastic. It's going to take a little bit of time to handcraft. Let's put some more in here. Fantastic. And 
last but not least is uh, this one. And just two to go. Okay. There it is. Though it's got a little bit of charging to do still. The middle one still hasn't fully charged. In fact, it's only at like 40%. But I'm very excited to see the range of the construction train now. Literally the maximum that we can get. Because we have to have some kind of power source. Okay. Um, I'm really resisting the temptation to just send it over right now. We'll give it another minute. What else can we do in the meantime? We could probably start by designing what we do with barrel. Well, let's do that. And let's have a look at FNEI. Uh, so right click, barrel goes into, this will, this will be the first step. Uh, chemical plant, barrel plus sulfuric acid. We get sulfate, sand, and water. I'm going to take a wild guess and say it's going to have more or less the same shape as the other two processing blocks that we've done, but we'll see. I think it's under metals. Oh, actually, we're not going to have any beads for this one, so it should be significantly different. Okay, so first step is a chemical plant. Uh, barrel. Sulfate. Next we have... Barrel sulfate to deal with. Beryllium sulfate. That becomes a fluid with cryonite rods, which we have an infinite supply of, and some water. Uh, hopefully we'll be net negative on... Well, no, I don't really care one way or the other. Um, if we're slightly positive on water, we'll just priority output slash vent it. Uh, but let's see. This is net negative on water. Actually, what's the actual ratio? Um, slightly negative on the beryllium sulfide. Sulfate, rather. 0.5 per second. That's... Five per second. That's an exact ratio without prod modules. Uh, and we're paying exactly five water per second. Oh wait, no, water is... Huh, water is net zero. Which means with prod modules we'll probably be gaining water. Weirdly enough. Okay. I think I'd like to design this with tier 3 modules in mind at this point. Um, and we'll probably use basic beacons. We'll lay it out so that we can fit it with a wide area, but the ratio I'll use tier 3s. I use a rate calculator as well, indeed. It is a very nice tool. So yeah, if we do the exact same thing with prods, uh, it's still net zero in water. Interesting how that doesn't change. It's prob it, it, it must have some exemption. Um, uh, 
Very interesting. Magic, indeed. Uh, but anyway, we go from net zero to slightly positive on the beryllium sulfate. So, nine to three. Oh, yeah, 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 it's not actually positive on water. If we can get the exact ratio, we can see we're slightly negative on water. Interesting. It rained, indeed. Uh, I don't think it's going to be... I don't think it's going to get better than that ratio. Negative 0.26, negative 0.016, positive 0.23. Do we want the beryllium sulfate backed up, or do we want something closer to a perfect ratio? With one of the machines down here not working full time. It depends on the layout. Let's see. I, I don't love that this is going to be three, though. Could we double it? Negative 0.032 beryllium sulfide per second. Uh, so what's the layout going to be like, I wonder? This is actually perfect for basic beacons. We can touch four of them with one beacon. And it is one fluid, one solid in, two solids, one fluid out. It doesn't do any recycling, uh, which makes it easier. That beacon is going to be a slight nuisance. Unless we do it like this. Definitely live with that. And fluid IO. Uh, let's see. Solids. Oh, we don't have any room for the solid IO for if we do it this way. I could have the pipes go around the outside. Like this. Uh, that would have to go there. So that there's room. For the undergrounds. Um, as for I.O. on the other side, that's going to be much simpler. Hmm, I think I'd like it better if we did it this way. Wait, no. That was the same. Uh, like that, perhaps? And then we have some nice, neat pairs of inserters. I definitely like this better. Um, we don't need this on both sides. If we double it... Do we want to double it, or could we make it wider? I'm thinking maybe we make it wider, because I think there's going to be one more step that we'll probably do in the same block. Beryllium hydroxide goes into... Uh, beryllium powder plus water. 
Oh wait, it, it itself becomes beryllium powder. So it's just one more step after this. These two become powder and we get some water back as well. Um, and then what do we do with the powder? We do the pyroflux molten beryllium instead of the coal and sand because we're going to get more out of that, I'm pretty sure. This is a lot to do in one block, but I think I want to do it anyway. Probably do want to put these side by side. Um, we could have a wide area beacon. Maybe even covering all of that. I think we'd need, like, potentially two... We'll see. What kind of rate do we get out of this so far? 12 barrel per second. Well, we haven't given it speed modules or efficiencies yet. Uh, what was it? Like two speeds, six efficiencies or something? If we don't want to pay massive power costs. Plus 20%, that seems okay. Mizuzi, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, how much is this? Without modules, uh, 38 barrel per second. With modules, say we go for rod threes, basic beacon. A uh, couple of speed and some efficiencies, perhaps. That's plus 100% power. I think we'll go with plus 10 instead. Then again, with how overpowered nuclear is, maybe I should just be more power hungry. Uh, that would be giving us only 10 barrel per second. I don't like that. Double the power, 50% more barrel. But fewer machines is more UPS friendly. I hate that we have to take that into consideration. That's 20 per... Hold on, 19 barrel core fragments per second. What are we actually able to produce at this stage of the game? We've got four drills... And assuming that we bottleneck on those and nothing else. Um, optimistically, because this is not taking the setting sun into account, we're looking at 9.9 for... We're, we're looking at less than 10 barrel core fragments per second for the moment. So... I think... We will go... Harder on the efficiency. And I could literally just efficiency these, actually, at this stage. So that's negative 80% power, 5 per second, this will be 10 per second. Overpowered, my dude, you are harnessing the power of primordial atomic energy. I think it deserves to be effective, indeed. Kissing walnuts. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, so if we do it this way, we're getting... Yeah, four point... That's actually perfect compared to what we're able to supply. Uh, a bit over 10 barrel per second. This can deal with 25... Cool. So this is absolutely overkill for now. 
Um, but I think I'm perfectly happy to build, to overbuild this for the moment. So that we don't have to double this, um, too soon. Uh, so 25 barrel per second in, 8 sulfate out, and you know what, we could probably efficiency the hell out of this as well. So that is 12 per second barrel in, less than 4 sulfate out. This is 4 sulfate. That actually works really well. Fantastic. And then what do we do with... How much? 9.92 uh, beryllium hydroxide. 9.92... Oh, that's perfect. Uh, we need five of these, but that that's... That's going to be asymmetrical, though. Let's pretend we didn't see that. Uh, let's see. I'm kidding. Uh, two water. So we are, we are actually going to be positive on water. So we'll have to make a flare stack to get rid of it. tiny amount of cryonite rods and sulfuric acid going in. And it actually produces sand. Alright. I won't even bother doubling it for the block yet because this is going to be all we need for quite a while. And delivery cannon chest. Um, I guess there's no need to leave room on either side for the beacon here. Let's bring these down a little bit further. It's perfect. And we output. Make that an underground, actually. That fits pretty well. And perfectly symmetrical, as all things should be. And we can actually connect the sulfuric acid like this. I kind of like that. a little underground here. And how many fluids do we need? Just the one. We need at least an initial delivery of water. But I'm thinking... Well, I don't really want to make a build that we can't just copy-paste. So I will make a drop-off for water as well. Oh, that doesn't have room there. Okay, so that'll be sulfuric acid. Uh, that can be water, I guess. Unless we want to put the other fluid storage tank here. Which just makes it a little more awkward doing the belts and stuff. That seems fine. Uh, so water... Goes this way. And up here as well. 
should be symmetrical. That's actually a really good fit. We'll make a flare stack. Uh, I'll need a pump just for decision making. I wish we could connect directly to this flare stack because I don't like having to put a pump here just for that. If water greater than 180,000, so more than 90% full, start getting rid of it. Sulfuric acid goes in here. And I just realized I can't... My plan was... Whoops. My plan was to have the loaders like this. Uh, but I can't actually do that if I want the pumps. Which I kind of do, because the spacing's kind of perfect. So I guess... I could do a splitter on either side. Or... Wait, no, that doesn't help. Because we need one in the middle. Uh, how about this? That looks kind of neat. A little bit different. And then loaders like this. We don't need to worry about it being balanced that much because we're only going to ask for a couple of train loads maximum in here and it can actually fit uh, like eight train loads. Four train loads each side, so even if it was completely imbalanced somehow, it wouldn't actually cause any problems. Mr. B Game, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Let's double check that our pipes get to where we think they do. It looks like. Some of them don't because I forgot about how these pipes work. Um, I guess I could do this. I, I don't love that design. Um... But it's got to be something kind of like that. Hmm. That actually lines up perfectly. Two solids in, one fluid in. Oh, I need water connected here. So that's actually sort of pretty convenient. And like this. About one, two, three. And I like so. And wait a second. We need cryonite plus beryllium sulfate. Uh, we need to filter out everything but the beryllium sulfate, and it needs to go on only one side of the belt. Are we going to drop the cryonite up here? The other underground pipe? Other underground pipe. This one? 
So this is barrel. And I think we'll do Bryanite. Through here. And just connect it like that. Yes, indeed. Uh, inserters are only going to output to one side of the belt. Wait, what's their output rate? Really, really slow. Okay. And that's this side. Uh, and how are we dealing with sand? We need to filter that out. Maybe like that. Probably have a sand pickup over here. Um, ultimately, our only pickups from this whole place will be... Beryllium plate, beryllium ingots, and sand. Probably do the sand over here somewhere. Much like we've done before. Wish I was this good at Factorio. Uh, someday. Sooner or later. It's just a matter of time. Uh, okay. So I want... Where's the middle? Right about here. And... Loader. Probably there. Johan Anderson, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. We want this to be an active pickup because it's picking up a side product that uh, if this fill if the sand fills up, the whole thing will stop. And sand should be pretty slow, less than one per second. So I'm perfectly happy to just balance it by limiting these two. And we'll do a 3x3 three three chest and put the sand in there. Also, which side of the belt is that going to be? This side? That works out really well. Not that it matters with the really slow rate over here. That's a pretty neat way to get rid of the sand. I'm not hating these water pipes as much as I thought. Uh, we are venting water because we put too much in. Oh wait, I need to... Oh, I already did put a circuit condition on this. If water greater than 90% full, we start venting it. And then we're going to be requesting water. Just exactly one train load. Because, well, just to be super safe, I'll set it to slightly more than one train load. Um... But it should just be delivered once, and then we'll keep slowly gaining water. Uh, sulfuric acid. 
consumption should be quite slow. 3.2 per second. So we'll just trigger a delivery at 25k. Um, and we also want barrel. How, what's the stack size? 50. So 8k is two train loads. And cryonite rod. Stack size 200. Uh, 16k is two train loads. But it should be super slow, right? It's incredibly slow. And since we're sharing, I don't want to use as much space. Um, we'll just set it to like... Trigger a delivery when we're down to 1,000. I'll just double check that. 200 times 80? 1600. Uh, 16k. Whoops. So we want to set that to 17,000. Just want to learn how to do this whole magical stuff with the logic networks on the trains. Uh, keep watching. I do my best to explain what I'm doing as I do it most of the time. Uh, but as for LTN, uh, there's two things. That the first thing you should know about LTN is don't trust the default settings. Go and look at them and change them yourself. Because it will... Like, it's basically set traps for you with the default settings. Um, but after that, the main thing to understand is LTN is always trying to push uh, the signal value of whatever resource it is towards zero. So if you have a drop-off station, uh, well, it's easier if we start with the pickup. If you have a pickup station, it's very, very simple. Um, you just connect a wire that'll read a positive number when you've got stuff available for pickup. A uh, positive number goes to the logistic train stop input. And don't worry too much about these for now, that's just some settings. And basically, if there's a positive number here, LTN wants to push that towards zero. And for the drop-off stations, if there's a negative number here, LTN wants to push that towards zero. So currently this is getting a signal, let's pretend there's no water here. Um, Currently, this is getting a signal of, like, negative 51k water. It wants to push it towards zero, so it'll schedule a train to bring 50k water. Uh, and as we read um, the water signal here, that goes up. It's going up very quickly, actually. Wait, what? Oh, it's not reading from this one. That's why. personally hate LTN for long runs. Why is that? Um, so here, my naming convention is... We are requesting... Barrel. That's the main thing. Rhinite Rod. Uh, sulfuric Acid and Water. It's going into Chemical Plants. Actually, we haven't finished yet. Uh, I suppose, ultimately, it's going into industrial furnaces to make ingots. Beryllium ingots. But I'm liking this build so far. Let's take a break from that for a moment. As we remember the thing that we started doing that so that we could wait for. We've got our construction train with its new roboports. Let's, I'm going to park it down here, and let's see what its range is like now. Use lots of train factorio loading and factory to train instead of containers or belts. Oh, like direct loading? Yeah, that's a pretty popular style from what I've seen. Where's our construction train? Oh, there it is. And it can reach at least all the way up here, which means it can finish the roundabouts. That's fantastic. 
That's so good. Is it having some inventory problems? Yeah. Has it found a crashed ship? Which means we need to expand our robot networks to cover the stupid cargo landing pads. Okay, back to the build. Uh, so we've got beryllium... I said I wasn't going to, like, double this, but it would let me have a perfect ratio with a nice even number of these plants. Whatever, let's just do it properly. So that should be... Oh, we've got beacon sickness. Uh, let's remove this for the moment. 1.92. What? I thought we calculated this. So that's a really good ratio for sulfate. This is going to be slightly slower than it actually looks. Uh, about 9.9 .9 beryllium hydroxide per second. Yeah, it said we need five of these. Oh, wait. I was looking at the output, not the input. So we actually do need six. And that gives us uh, probably about 11.8 beryllium powder per second. And we are still slightly net positive on water. Okay. What's our next step with the powder? I think I already looked at that. Uh, it goes straight to furnace with pyroflux. I doubt we're going to need a whole lot of furnaces here, based on the other builds. Not to mention just the numbers in general. Let's give him prod threes, efficiencies. That's actually regular power consumption. And we want molten beryllium. And then casting. Uh, I'm pretty sure we can't rub these. Yeah, we can't. Does it benefit from efficiency? It does. Interesting. Alright, how many of these do we need to keep up? We're looking at, let's call it 11.9 beryllium powder per second, even though it's going to be a bit Tiny bit slower than that. Uh, we actually need a lot more furnaces than I expected. Say 22? Okay. 22 furnaces coming right up. How many is this? Uh, 14. 22 is quite a lot. Are we sure it's 22? Brilliant powder. Yeah, it's still positive. Uh, that would be 22. That is long. Can we get a nice spread of... These happen in threes. That's a no. What if we do an extra column? And we put the beacons between them. Well, not quite like that. Oh, that doesn't actually fit very well with the pipes. Unless I make it a bit wider. Should be fine. Okay, and 22 isn't divisible by four. Um, however, we could probably do it like this. 
So that could handle 12.8 per second. That's more than enough. Midden, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. How many casters do I need to keep up with this? Um, if it's 11.9... Uh, that's about 82 to 85 per second. I could put some speed modules in the casters, but... I don't think that's really necessary. We need nine. Depending on where they fit, though. Maybe turn these around. One, two, three, four, five, six. Can't really fit the casters under beacons. I'd like to fit all of those around a wide area. This one would go here, I think. And if it's going to line up about the same, this one's going to go about here. Except that's not in the middle. We could do input pipe like so. It's not going to be a problem. And output pipe also very difficult. Is it just fluid in, fluid out? No, there's the beryllium powder that we've been making this whole time. If you delete two machines for the wide area beacon, you get back to 22. Uh, true. A little bit tricky to move all of these, or not. Like that, kind of. Could put it closer together now, I think. We'd have like a double pipe here if it's going to be symmetrical. I don't love that. Maybe like that. Oh, that's fine, actually. Where are we going to put the casting machines? I'd love to fit them in with the baby beacons somehow. I really don't know. Physical input shouldn't be too difficult. Um, probably something like that. It should be quite slow, right? Less than one per second. It's the physical output that's hard to make look good. Well, it's not hard to keep it under a wide area beacon, but baby beacons are a problem. Let's double check that ratio. Um, I think... I think we calculated 
11.904 per second. Between 82 and 85 molten per second. Yeah, so we need nine machines. actually really awkward. Is there a world where I can put the casters close to machines? Well, we don't need one caster per machine. I could somehow make eight fit close to the beacons. But I don't think it's going to look very good. It's not even. Eight would work with the various lower rates in front. I mean, technically, if we supplied everything all the time, Eight would bottleneck, but it's not that big of a deal. Especially if... How many machines would be required for 80? 23. We've got, what, 24? 22. That doesn't sound right. Oh, I was looking at the input for this here. Wait, wait, wait. 11 point... Yeah, it's 82 to 80... It's like 83 per second. But... What did I just figure out? I'm very confused. All of this for a fraction of an ingot per second. I think that's every step ahead is slightly bottlenecked. So I feel like 8 should be alright in the end. Um, the bottlenecks are... Very, very, very slight on beryllium sulfate. And we get uh, something like 9.9 .9 or 9.85 beryllium hydroxide per second. Um, this actually... we I think we'd actually be saturated on beryllium hydroxide, which means we really do get... 11.904 powder per second. Um, if we use 22 machines, uh, beryllium powder will saturate. If we use 23, it won't. So we're actually going to get 82.133 molten beryllium per second. So eight of these beryllium will saturate. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Uh, I'm actually glad you made me look through all that. So, we can fit eight of those under the baby beacons. And the output is going to look a little bit awkward, but I think I'm okay with that. We could either do it like this. It's kind of weird. Uh, not too bad, I suppose. The alternative is, like, arbitrarily going to the side like that. Which I think is just worse, actually. So, yeah. I think that's our build. Cool. Um, this isn't actually connected yet, and we don't need these output pipes going anywhere else. We don't need these going anywhere. Well, wait, 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 we haven't decided where the pyroflux is coming from. Probably up here. Uh, and I don't need a bulk rail unloader for that. Let's put in a requester, a huge storage tank, 
and nice direct output. Uh, unfortunately, this won't reach over here. Casting machines need sand? No. I know exactly what to do about that. We'll do the input this. That was a close one. Phew. Okay. Um, unloader it is. That's space rail. We don't need space rail on the ground. And we'll do... Oops. And... That doesn't quite line up perfectly. Maybe I'll, like, mirror these bits just for the sake of that. It's going to be really hard to see what's going on with those belts. No, they're actually all supposed to face the same way. That's fine. So, the outside one... Oh, wait, I haven't even... That might have been totally unnecessary, because I haven't even decided exactly how this will line up. But the reason I was doing that was so that it could output like so. Nice and neat. Except this one won't line up the same way regardless. So I might move those over a bit just for the look of it, but uh, really doesn't matter. Uh, we need water to be recycled. Oh, that's awkward. Um, how about like this? That'll have to do, I guess. Wait, no it doesn't. Except kind of, yes. That looks a bit tidier, I think. And then... I'm gonna have a similar problem down here. Are we going to use the same shape? May as well. Looks a little bit weird, but I don't hate this. Let's just confirm... Well, you know what I should do? I should put in some test inputs. Uh, barrel. Crinite. Rod and super inserters. We've already got our fluid inputs. Actually, why don't I just leave that where it is? We're supposed to be net positive on water, just ever so slightly. Uh, and let's get rid of the super beacons, so we can see if this works. Alright, sand is going where sand belongs. Crinite rods are going where crinite rods belong. Uh, beryllium sulfate is going where beryllium sulfate belongs. And it should be slightly net negative, so it'll take a while to... Not exactly saturate, I guess. Except we did calculate that this would not quite saturate its input, except this will saturate its output. So I think eventually we would see uh, beryllium sulfate 
saturated on this belt. Is it net positive on sand? Oh, that's a great question. It is. We do not need to drop off sand. Oh, I love this. This is this is good. This is good thinking. Um So instead of a output station. Oh wait, we're still gonna need an output station, right? But it needs to be low priority. Which is very inconvenient considering the shape of this. <laughs> you you deserve that applause. Good job. Um, did I set it so that... Oh. Big beacon doesn't quite touch these four down the bottom. Can we do something about that? Um, that doesn't have any other inputs or outputs, right? But it has its physical outputs, which are going to be here. We are in this together, indeed. Uh, okay, so... Six tiles. Uh, we're two tiles off. Could I put these over here somehow? And then the beacons are gonna cry. That's a frustrating... Well, I know the ratios are going to change a bit when we're using wide area beacons, but still. It doesn't necessarily mean that many fewer machines for powder. Hmm. It's literally just two tiles. I don't want to widen these, but maybe I will. I really like the way this lines up, though. Let's check in on our build. I think there's probably a few things missing. Oh yeah, like the fact that we only carry five um, pulverizers. Normally. We need 19. What's going on here? Oh, the bots are still... Uh, where do we normally keep our pulverizers? In here, that's way too many. Um, casting machines at the moment. Let's see where we've got some more room. I don't want to have to send the train back here like three times. I'll come back to that. The output pipes can move down two tiles when baby beacons are gone. Output pipes down two tiles. Oh, you mean these ones? I'd still have to widen this. That's what I was thinking about. Um, like, if I put this here... Then this could come down here. Then it wouldn't touch the ones at the top, actually. Except we'd be able to put this, like, closer. I kind of make... kind of want to make it work like this. Might have to change what we do with sand. A little bit. Which we want to do anyway. Uh, I could put baby beacons here. Okay. I'm going to copy-paste this before we realize that we want to go back. Uh, that leaves room for baby beacon. 
The water pipes are a little bit of a pain, but it's probably fine. Probably keep that bit, actually. Oh, wait, if we turn this around... I could literally... directly insert that's how you minimize how many pipes we need so that's going to be water This will have to change, probably. Uh, this doesn't have to be so far apart, obviously. Although... Kind of like how it lines up with that. We could do the powder output... here. I like this better at this rate. Water. Maybe like this instead. Whoops. Uh, and we need water to find its way over here. So that beryllium uh, hydroxide doesn't go anywhere but straight into the next machine. That's kind of cool. I kind of like that. Uh, and sand can actually squeeze through right here. Okay. Although, I kind of want the sand going up this way. I guess it doesn't matter. Instead of sand snaking its way up here, it might be neater to do it like this. Turn these around. That's the output. You know what? Um, let me just remove these for the moment. So I don't get confused. Okay. Send. Uh, through here, and I could just snake it like this. It might actually be the neater way to do it. Oh, how fast does this thing need sand anyway? Super slow, right? 0.08 per second. Let's do yellow for the sand. And not that we need it, but we'll do blue for the beryllium. Just so it's a little bit clearer. For the inputs and outputs. Like that. And like that. 
got an underground pipe going in, but none going out. Uh, what do you mean? Underground pipe going in. Oh, this one? Izu Seire. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Uh, and I want to do ingots and plate output here. So I'm not going to put sand in either of these spots. Fixed, indeed. Fantastic. Alright, do we want to move this over like a tile? I don't really see the point. Uh, we need the beryllium powder input also. Same thing. It's super slow, so it doesn't matter which side of the belt it's on. I could do a similar... I think I will. Except this would have to go up here. Alright, so input. That's not right. And I want this one to be going down this way. Two, four. Uh, six. Same thing down here. Two. Uh, I guess three. Why don't we put these two together like that? So, let's make it consistent with this one. Like that. Only the beacon goes here. That seems okay. Except these will have to be long arms. I hope we're going to be able to fit some substations. Yeah, it looks looks like it's going to be fine, actually. Oh. So this right here is going to be a pyroflux. And we're going to get that like so. One and a two. And a three. And why are these ones not lighting up? Because they don't have any barrel. Uh, 11 point. Let's just double check this. We should be net positive on beryllium powder. That ignores that this is going to be slightly net negative on beryllium sulfate. But, uh, we're more than a tiny bit positive on beryllium hydroxide. So beryllium hydroxide should be saturated, which means we should get 11.904 brilliant powder per second. Uh, and this needs... 
11.733 powder per second. I think it's going to take its sweet time saturating. El Pancho, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Need an output for sand excess too. Yes, we do. Um, I think I will just... How, how much sand do we get? 0.35 per second. If we take this half of it, that's 0.49. So I could actually just have a low priority sand output here. Oh, that's barrel. Um, something like this. Oh, it doesn't need a filter. It just needs output priority left. So all of the sand from this side is going to go to ingots. Is that theoretically going to cause problems if everything gets saturated one day or some things get saturated? I don't think so, because our, our only like main input, if you like, is barrel. The sand comes from the barrel. And if we don't have sulfuric acid, we don't consume the barrel, blah blah blah. Um, I guess if there's no pyroflux for a while, sand will back up. Which means this side won't be able to do its output for a while, but all of the other stuff should be backed up anyway. Yeah, I don't think it's a problem. If we only take the sand from one side. Does that sound right? Let's put a assembler. I don't actually have one. Right about here to make beryllium plate. Confirm that we can't prod module it. Uh, and also, just one machine should be way more than we need. 0.32 ingots per second. This can consume 0.25. Uh, I think we will need ingots themselves. Not just because they're high density. Nope. Not even correct. We actually only need plate. Uh, except that we can transport them at a much higher density. Um, five times the density. Because this is stack size 200. One makes 10. So 100 makes 2,000. Right? One stack of these makes 10 stacks of these. No, that's not right. Uh, 100 times 10, 1,000, which is 5 stacks. Yeah, it's 5 times as dense. Uh, considering that there's nothing that beryllium ingots go into directly, uh, it is just possible that we want to be able to... That looks weird. It's very weird. Uh, it is possible that we want to be able to turn all of the plate uh, ingots into plate sometimes. This is a cheat mode I can get behind, <laughs> indeed. Uh, let's do the ingots out. Down this way. Don't need fancy balanced belts when everything is so slow that it uses less than a belt. Uh, I kind of like it a little bit 
if we could use both sides of this one, though. On the off chance that we run out of Pyroflux one day, I'd like to just see uh, the barrel saturated. Beryllium powder. Uh, Alright, so we want one cargo wagon in the back, one cargo wagon in the front. And... No, I think we want more than that in the back. Make sure there's... What is it? Stacks to 100. That's a lot. Uh, 100 times 40... 40, 100. Make sure there's more than that in the back before we push it to the front. Uh, we need passive provider. And I want to allow short trains as well as long trains here. Um, but also, check the front. Make sure it's full. 4k. Before we turn it into plate. And then just bring it over here. Emo? Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And then limit this to 40 stacks each. Short trains and long trains are permissible. And provide threshold 80 stacks. Cool. Oh, and we did sort out the sand, didn't we? I have the strangest of bugs in my SE game. On my waterless planet, all my coal miners just popped, popped on the ground. What does, what does that mean? What does that look like? Short trains won't work with delivery cannon chests. Uh, they will. The inserters automatically take from the delivery cannon chests. And we're reading from only these two. We don't allow a delivery unless there's 80 stacks, so both of these have to be full. And the short train will just take 40 stacks from here. No core miner item is on ground. <laughs> oh, so the core miner just like literally... Literally dropped onto the ground like that. Is that what happened? <laughs> um, I'm sorry that you're getting that bug, but that's kind of weird and funny. Okay. Seems to be working, except this one never gets any... Uh, barrel. Um, but yeah, that seems to be pretty good. Uh, it'll take time. If there's a problem with the sand output, it'll take time to find it. Uh, and if there is, I'll just maybe run the sand all the way back here or something. It's going to take a while for this one to get any because the fast inserter is going to be super greedy grabbing beryllium powder. Limit to long train amount makes sense, indeed. Alright, uh, last thing before we actually build it is... Uh, I want to test... That this thing actually kicks in at the right time. So once there's enough in the back... 
for a cargo wagon, we'll start pushing it to the front. Once there's enough in the front for a cargo wagon, we'll start making plate. That's going to take a moment. Let's do the uh, station names. Beryllium plate pickup. Beryllium ingot pickup. And I think, because providers are really easy to set up, I think that's already done. I have a sneaky suspicion it has to do with loading your save game when you are in editor extension. How so? Oh, we need another 10 stacks. That won't take too long. Half a stack per second, almost. And we push to the front right about now. Fantastic. And only when that's full, we should see those two inserters spring into action. Only thing that does something with surface. Ah, oh, that makes sense. Wait, does it? So the only bug you've got is core mining drills just popped. Do they stop us from placing drills here? Not in the same way as cargo landing pads and stuff. Uh, it's a bit tricky trying to figure out. It might be possible to make a core seam. I think I've tried it before. Sort of can't quite get there. At least not quickly enough to do it on stream. Alright, let's... I I'm going to bet that this works. Uh, but we're almost there. Let's just keep an eye on it. Pretty sure it's set up correctly. JP, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Two more stacks. And... Go. Fantastic. Seems a good... Ridiculous stack size, holy cow. The beryllium plate, yeah, it's a lot higher than some other ones. Um, but that's a pretty good uh, block, I think. This one... Oh, we need to do the uh, power pulse. Lighted substation. Uh, this is already connected. Fantastic. Let's get rid of the cheat inputs. That's a really good fit. I like that. This one... Not as much. But it's fine. Oh, that stings a little bit. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, pretend you didn't see that. And this could go here. And this could go here. And then... We need one about here anyway. Right in the middle of where the cargo wagon would fit. Does that actually reach? It does not. Very unfortunate. Uh, this seems like the natural place to put these ones. One off. 
That's not too bad, except for this little bit over here. It's about as good as it gets. They aren't symmetrical now. Way, way? What? You could move the substations on the right column to the right by a bit. Over here? My... Oh, right. Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Okay, I don't love the way these ones connect. Let's just do it like this. Oh, that's... That's worse. Oh, okay. That's... I see how it is. Nope, even worse. Close enough, I guess. Saved? Indeed, that was really good. I'm glad uh, I'm glad that was pointed out, thank you. Uh, except what the hell is this? That's a bit better, I think. Alright, let's uh, blueprint this thing. Finally. So this is... I'm going to mark it with ingots. How do we... I, I nearly said pronounce. How do we pronounce with the letters uh, beryllium ingot? Snap to grid. Seems a good... Metals, beryllium ingot, there we go. And I'm not calling it basic, because we're using beacons and modules here. Uh, but that's going to be the build. Let's get our construction train. Do we have a few stacks spare? We've got one here. And we've got a couple over here. Or Verizon. Are they going to bring... Huh. All of the pulverizers are in here. Okay. That didn't work. Whatever. Two trips, and we finish this thing. People care way too much how the power lines are connected in this game. Not enough. Moonbeam, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, and I guess I could go help. How many pulverizers am I carrying? Five? Give me some more. Could have just done it this way to start with. They just have such a tiny stack size. Ooh, Worker Robot Speed 7 is almost finished. How many more prods have we made lately? Oh, is that a mine that's empty? I believe it is. And let's make this a pickup. Or... Uh, sulfuric Acid. Super high priority. Get that back out of there. And as I kind of expect, I should have like deconned these or something. There's a little bit of uranium left there. All right, where am I? Robot boards go. Barrel core fragment processing, go. How many prod modules have we made since I unbroke? Uh, that's pretty good, actually. That was better than I was expecting. 
We've got 362 prod 3s. Let's make use of them. Make sure we get the most of our... Uh, get Make the most out of our core fragments that we need to pay uh, cargo rocket sections to get. Alright. Prod 3s. Uh, some efficiencies. Some sp speed is full. That's good. That's nice. You left your robots in Narnia? Wait, you don't mean the editor. Do you mean back here? Tell me you just mean back here. I didn't leave them over here, did I? No, we're good. Whew. Just back here. Alright. Don't scare me like that. Precious bots are still with us. Okay, we got prod threes all the way through. Wait, what? Oh, why is this looking for prod ones? Is that everything? Are they all prod three? It looks like it. What about the first build? Those are prod ones. Okay. I think that's it. Oh, uh, no, 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 bots, stop it. No, no, bad. We don't need the crushed MSI in my personal uh, cargo rockets. Okay. Um, but yeah, with maximum prod threes, we are able to keep up with 48 Vulcanite core fragments per second. I think that's going to be fine actually a lot more than I thought. Uh, and we need barrel core fragments to get the prods as well. Hurry up. Stop wasting. Maybe I should have taken the time to quickly make a module inserter. Would have been faster. Alright, let's copy beacons. Apparently, oh, I turned off my Rogo ports because they were misbehaving. There we go. How many... We're still able to deal with 28 barrel core fragments per second, so that's more than enough. Oh, that is the limit of where that train can reach. That's more than enough, though. If it can reach the roundabout from the other side of the rail block, uh, I'm quite pleased with that. That means just one trip, assuming it has enough stuff. Wanted all F in these... All efficiencies? Um... Considering how much faster it is than we need, yeah, you're right, that's... At this time, that's actually a better idea. Okay. So this is... Core Fragment Processing for Barrel. And now we need to actually do something uh, with the barrel. And I think I could put it here. Why not? We've got iridium ingots right next door. And it's also very, very close. Uh, the train can pick up from here, go down here, and drop off here for the barrel. It's a very, very short trip. Alright, let's bring... The old construction train. What's it complaining about? Oh, again with the bots picking stuff up. Just going to need it to empty so that the bots can jump back into 
the cargo wagons. There we go. Fantastic. Uh, and it looks like our bots have built a sizable chunk of this. I still have prod modules left. Very, very nice. Uh, we're going to need some more rail. Is this train ready to go? It's getting there. Oh, and it should have prods as well. It does not have prods. Nani. Uh, didn't we have like eight stacks when I picked this up? What's the provide threshold? Oh, I turned this off for a while. That's why. Is this contraction... Contraction? Train? Oh, construction train. Part of K2, or is that a different mod you added? Uh, I think K2 allows us to do the vehicle roboports and stuff, yes. There's a separate mod, if you don't want to do K2, called uh, Vehicle Equipment Grid. Um, but yeah, I think it's K2 that puts the... Uh, that gives us the grid on the cargo wagons. Not to mention... Oh. Not to mention the locomotives, because the locomotives do not have a Oh, yes, they do. They do have an equipment grid. They have a very large equipment grid, actually. Uh, we could probably... Where is it? I, I dare say we could probably speed up the locomotives quite a lot. If we were to spam... Additional electric engines. They can, in fact, be placed in the locomotives. Very interesting. Dimensions 4x4, four four, movement bonus 50%. That seems... Very, very good, actually. Uh, with the other mod, I remember putting exoskeletons in cars. But that's 2x4 for 20%. This is better... Two of these would give you 40%, uh, and this is giving you 50% uh, for the same the same dimensions. Alright, let's bring over... What the? Let's bring over our train right about here. Wait for inactivity. Personal Shinkan Shinkansen train? What's that? Sheep say met. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. They get comically fast with eight motors? I can imagine. They only give acceleration bonus for trains, but it is very useful. Yeah, I'm really... Acceleration for trains is a big deal, though. I'm actually really loving... One of the reasons I'm really loving these rail blocks is how much faster the trains accelerate. So when there are traffic problems, they actually get resolved so much faster um, the moment that I put in a fix. What are these bots doing? Oh no, they're bringing the crashed rocket stuff back to the train. Uh, again? Or is that the same crashed rocket? Probably again. And now they can't build. Uh, my nemesis cargo rockets. I'm just gonna build this myself. Oh, oh no indeed. Midden? Iganchev, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Ah, oh, dear. I hate cargo rockets. That range, though, right? 
Now your bot's picking it up as well? Yeah. 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 I still think it was the right decision not to have too many construction bots in this block. Uh, because if they pick it all up too fast, they put the, for example, Vulcanite core fragments in the general storage chest, which goes back to... back to the mall. Seems like the hate goes both ways. <laughs> yeah. They sure crash a lot for supposedly having like a 98% chance not to. Needs to be some expensive endgame tech that nullifies cargo rocket crashes? There is, it's called, uh, it's called spaceships. It's called not using cargo rockets. Uh, Boggles, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Some amazing landing pad or something. Uh, yeah, spaceships, definitely. Okay. Uh, the bots are taking their sweet time emptying out the scrap, so I'll just do it this way. Oh, they're so busy here because there've been uh, too many, too many pickups by the the so-called trash train. I think that's one reason, anyway. Okay, let me go see how much of this I can build. Didn't we say 97% on worker robot speed a while ago? Alright, let's a build. What if... Okay, we need to empty this again. Because the bots, like, the bots pick up the Vulcanite, can't get back into the train because it's full. Uh, hang around here, the train comes back, empties itself, and then the bots start moving across the map to get back to the train. And then it's moved on from the, uh, from the bulk rail unloaders before the bots get back and put more... For example, Vulcanite core fragments into the train. I could maybe change it so that uh, we wait for like a minute of inactivity. I don't love that, but it would mean I don't have to give it a second order to go back to the emptier. Um, and I'm going to try parking the construction train, like, down here. So it hopefully just can't quite reach the cargo pads. Or maybe they'll be empty. No. The cargo rockets crash so far away that it's taking the bots a while this time. It's actually two different crashes at the same time that they're dealing with. Not happy, Jan. Alright, let's try parking our construction train down here. I wish we could somehow tell the bots or the roboports in the cargo wagons to just, I don't know, not deconstruct things. I could have a separate train for deconstruction if I really wanted. While we're at it, um, let's get another advanced radar. Where's rare metals? There they are. So that when we do the uh, LTN screensaver, you guys can see down that corner of the map. Is 
is our train building? Without... Without shenanigans? It looks like it. Alright, cool. Where are we putting this radar? Probably around here-ish. That's already got a space. That seems pretty good. Except we don't have coverage on the barrel. Can we move that up? Up one? That seems like an improvement. I need one over here as well. You'd have to do some separated logistic networks to make the bots pick up the filled items. Filled items. I could... Hmm... I guess one thing I could do is put filters, like it would be a pain to change what's in the train, but I could actually put filters for every inventory slot for the cargo wagons, uh, since that's static as long as I don't change what we're putting in the wagon. I was talking about the equipment gantry mod. Uh, well, you gave me an... <laughs> you, you may have given me a good idea regardless. So I'll wait till this is parked and then I'll show you what I mean. We've got ten prod trees remaining. I hope we can fill this out. I think not. Yeah, we're just a little bit short. Do we have some more? We have zero. Unfortunate. How about I steal some Vulcanite blocks? Let's have a look at our production. The Vulcanite blocks. Oh, there's been a gap. But mostly it's been pretty steady? So what just happened? Oh, is that because of the crashed rocket? Is that actually why? Uh, but yeah, I was thinking for the construction train, we'll wait till it's full, but I could just go like this. That should not have extra construction bot. I know why it has extra construction bot, you're about to witness it. Exactly what I described it before. And this is even after I told it to wait for 60 seconds of inactivity at the unloader. I'm not going to increase that anymore. I think we'll just not bother with that condition. Is this too full? It is. Alright. Um, I might just steal a few Vulcanite blocks. So that we can immediately get... Those last few... Uh... Prod modules. So that we can fill out our barrel and get the most out of that. Wow, that's fast. Point blank logistic bots are insane. Look at those stacks just disappear. Okay, so that should be quite a few prod modules. Uh, but yeah, let's have another look at our train. It's still doing that? About end 30 seconds. There's still the extra bots in there, which suggests that they got into the train after it was emptied. Okay. 
So now it's going to fill up. And I'm going to put filters on all of the stuff that's supposed to be in the train. And maybe even limit... Why are we putting in extra bots? Oh. Oh, I see why. That's my fault. Uh, I didn't change these from when we stopped using four cargo wagons. So there was actually a stack and a bit of bots in each cargo wagon every time. Maybe I should have set up this station facing the other way. I still could do that. So the construction train would go into the unloader and then back this way. So if it has to go there again, it could just zigzag. Will the bots respect the filters or just block hovering the wagon with junk? We're going to find out. don't know why those signals got in there in that order. Can I just, like... Nope. Doesn't work that way. That's really weird. Because we're using the anything signal, like, all of these things have to be put in in order. Very, very strange that those rail signals got there. Uh, but alright, it doesn't actually cause any problems for what we're trying to do. Way too many middle clicks. Very, very awkward. I think there's a mod that does this. But I do not have it because I don't usually use these filters because I use LTN. LTN can remove these filters with a mod setting, but never add them. Okay. So. Uh, my idea is... I don't suppose we have a handy crashed rocket right now. Do we have some rocks or something I could use to test this? Lying around? Yeah, here's some rocks. Okay, so we're going to send our construction train up here. In activity, I'm going to mark these rocks for deconstruction. How about some fishies as well? And I'm hoping the bots will simply not try to pick them up. I need more filters in my life, if that's the case. Well, we're about to find out. They are going for it. Which means... That accomplished nothing. They're gonna be stuck because they can't deliver it, yeah. We were trying to avoid that by simply forbidding them from going to pick it up, effectively. Uh, that's a frustrating. Now I have to clear all of these. Well, I have to clear them on just one, and then we can copy paste, right? Welp, indeed. There we go. More middle clicks? No. No more middle clicks, please. They're so awkward. Okay. Uh, we still need like a handful of prods over there, like literally two or three. Oh, we are at 99% on worker robot speed, so it has not stopped. We're about to hear the doop a doop. This exact reason is what made me install early game Spidertrons and a mod that made all equipment 
one by one. Indeed. I'd like a mod that just auto-sorts inventories, including Spidertrons. I know there's one that, like, it does, but it only happens with the Spidertrons when you click on it. But when I've made construction Spidertrons with inventories pretty full of stuff, uh, even when I leave several empty inventory spaces, they eventually end up over full with, like... It's literally impossible to demonstrate with the player without changing a setting here. Uh, is it interface? Sort. Auto sort. No. Inventory. Always keep player's main inventory sorted. Okay. So, like, because of shenanigans with the bots, you'd end up with stuff like this. So th that's taking up two more stacks than it should. And all of that adds up eventually to the Spidertron being over full when it's actually when it actually shouldn't be. Uh and it's even with uh even with auto trash, like reconfiguring it to be empty, emptying the Spidertron and then refilling it, um, it's it, it's a bit annoying. Spidertron enhancements automatically sort? Yes, please. Can you leave me a link for that? You can set a limit for all materials. I've done that. I've even set it to, like, a little bit less than a stack size. It, it doesn't... It's not enough. Unfortunately. What is this notification? Oh, we're missing a flare stack. Oh. Uh, and also... I messed up. Um, so in this station, we need the pumps to talk to the LTN train stop output. As you can see, right now it's doing a negative one signal for sulfuric acid. Uh, that means the train is trying to empty itself of sulfuric acid. So we're just going to do less than zero sulfuric acid here, and less than zero water up here. But the question is... Can I salvage our sulfuric acid? Uh, I think the answer is yes. Why do I have no underground pipe? What the? What? Get get out of here. Uh, which one was suppo supposed to be? This one's supposed to be sulfuric acid, not water. Looks like that would be separate if I fix it now. So we can go ahead and do this. And this one's water. And before a train comes in here with water, uh, we need to... We need to get all of the sulfuric acid out of here. Which it looks like we're getting close to. Posted the link in the DC too. Thank you, Evil Plow. You can enter a train without leaving the spider. I, I don't follow. Doop a doop, indeed. Particle Collider's already a quarter done, almost. Uh, Alright. We're half done emptying this of sulfuric. I'll have to, like, empty. Uh, like, disconnect it so it's a separate fluid network before I delete, otherwise we'll delete all of this as well. Three hundred seventy-six. Is this thing stopped? What? 
Oh, there's water again. Why is it like this? It's slowing down as fluids do. Alright, what are we doing in the meantime? Probably need to reset our construction train again. No, right, we're good. Uh, at least within all that I found the error that I hadn't updated this um, constant. Um, you know what? Ten pulverizers is fine. One, oh, 99, 98, 97, 96. That's actually still going pretty quick. Blast of the... How does it keep getting little bits of water in here? Purge the water. I said purge the water. It must be coming out of the pumps. Or something. No, the water must be coming out of the machines. Duh. So I have to keep purging the water uh, so we can keep pumping the sulfuric acid. Coming up the pipe from the build. Yes. Correct. And sometimes, I guess, the water gets in here, in particular. So the pump can't pump any more sulfuric. That's uh, getting pretty close to empty. Fantastic. Alright, I can wait no longer. Let's purge all that and get rid of that and pump the sulfuric back in here. That was very, very quick. And we're done. That's our... That's our system. In comes the cryonite rods, which apparently we already... Oh, we need those down here, not up there. In comes the cryonite rods. And... We don't have water here. We do now. Are we net positive on water with the part that we're doing already, or... I think we are, yeah. There should be another train bringing water. Here it comes. So this will be our one delivery of water before it never bothers to schedule another one again. Because it'll be net positive on water, and we'll have to vent it. But it's very, very, very slowly net positive on water. It's not like it's worth outputting it to the rail network. doop a doop Energy Catalog 2, that's actually the last thing I've got queued up right now. Fantastic. And we've actually got everything but the Pyroflux. Um, which I haven't requested here. That would probably help. Pyroflux requester. Pyroflux... A train load and a half is probably fine, I guess. Don't care if it's a short or a long train. Uh, the rate that we consume pyroflux is actually very, very slow. So we should... Actually, that's not enough. Let's just schedule a pickup here. Fantastic. It's actually sending a long fluid train instead of a short one. That's why we set the provide thresholds as high as it takes to fill a double train. Yeah, 
even when short drains are permitted. Uh, but yeah, hopefully that's coming to barrel. Is it coming to barrel? It's not. Uh, halt. Halt and Z. Uh, please go over here and drop off here. Thank you. Alright, so that is beryllium ingot. And we can now confirm that it works. And 28k is actually going to last quite a while. This thing going at full speed. Would take uh, this many minutes, this many hours, three and a third hours uh, to run out of pyroflux. Which is sort of not that long, considering how long it takes uh, to make the ingots, but whatever. I hope we're catching up with uh, Vulcanite compared to our needs, because we can't go anywhere else in the solar system for it. I could maybe take advantage of some of the temporary Vulcanite mines, but don't they have a stack size of, like, negative 600? Vulcanite, I think it's 20. Yeah, that is gross. Um, it's actually more stack efficient to send it back as core fragments. 20 core fragments becomes 25 Vulcanite. And they have the same stack size. That's wild. And that's before we get plus 32% out of productivity bonuses. Um, so I think... I think what I would do instead is go to Granis and increase our power, uh, assuming we don't already have plenty. We kind of do already have plenty. It's like right at the start of the day that our accumulators are full. And it looked like we had like a hundred megawatt to spare. Um, I believe we're bottlenecked on the actual Vulcanite core fragments as opposed to the cargo rocket. So I could probably just take the construction train and place some of these coal mining drills. We do get diminishing returns, but if I add another four drills... Um, the power should mostly be able to handle... Wow, we've got like 400 megawatts spare. Most of the day. We could definitely double our drills. So if I place another four coal mining drills, we get like very approximately half as much. Like 50% more Vulcanite, maybe. That's going to help a lot. It's going to be a bit of a pain... Dragging out the rail with a construction train, but it's literally our only option um, as long as as long as we don't have spidertrons and we're not going to the planet ourselves. So let's make some stations. Uh, how about like it is? Very, very lazy, very, very easy. That doesn't fit the way I want to. Signal is inconvenient. Fantastic. And then we go doop-a-doop. -doop. 
We need to select some more research. Breaking force is not the worst idea. Uh, this is the last breaking force I can get before I need new science, so let's do that. Uh, follower robot count. We're actually mostly finished and it's very expensive. I think there's another one that costs utility science packs. Let's just do that. As long as I don't have any pressing needs. Cool. Now, Mr. Train, if you please, head down this way. Did I put the... nope. We don't have the better rover ports in this one. So we have to do many, many movements like this. Also, before I send it any further, we should probably do some power poles. I don't know how many clip explosives... Whoa, 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 whoa. I don't know how many clip explosives we have, so let's not waste them. Uh, that seems fine. What? Oh, here we go. Should do it. Are the bots going to do that thing? I don't think we have some of these items. So we need the train to have... Does it, does it really not have power poles? Or it might just be because it used them? I don't think so. Uh, let's see. Power poles, loaders, LTN stop. Constant cut, that's a lot. Let's just send it back for now. Yeah, we haven't put that much in yet. Um, we need a stack of holes, substations. Uh, LTN stops if we have them. I hope we do. I don't think we do. We do. Fantastic. Kuzi Sarai, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Also, it looks like the robots that went out to the cliff never came back. They'll be coming back as soon as there's room in... Yep, here they come. As soon as there's room in the cargo wagon again. like that's all of them. So we can hurry up and start loading. After you cancelled they just stopped, yeah. Because there was no room. I think it, they, they picked up rocks, so there was no room in the cargo wagon. You know what? I don't think we actually need... Holy crap, 2,000 rail? Yeah, nah. While we're at it, why don't I update this the same way I did on the other planet? We're gonna go set filters, whitelist, and we need a constant combinator. And we're gonna go times negative one. Uh, reading from... the train. So subtract what's in the train uh, and the original number is whatever we're trying to put in the train. Um, and that way should. Nope, I think I have missed something. 
Oh, I haven't connected it yet. That would probably help. Uh, and we have to make an exception for construction bots. We'll allow 50. And that's basically it. So it's going to remove anything that's not supposed to be in the train. Uh, I seem to have made a mistake. What is the mistake? I wonder. Stack size is a bitch. No, it does sort that out, because this one inputs it uh, precisely. And this one just... This one will this one will take out extra sometimes, but that's fine. The alternative is a stack size of 1 on this. Read train contents times negative 1. Okay. And... Oh, I think I've got it backward. Let me just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Hold on. Let me see if I can figure it out without cheating, like by looking at my own solution. Uh, we actually want a negative for what's supposed to be in the train. Not what is in the train. Um... So that goes there. Uh, red wire goes straight to this one. And just to make it clear that these are sort of separate, uh, read from the train uh, can go to here. And I put that in the wrong place. Okay, so we get the negative of what's supposed to be in the train. Uh, negative 50 construction bots, because they're not included up here. And positive of what is already in the train. So the difference is what's in the train, but isn't supposed to be in the train anymore. So if I add um, some blue belt, that's going in. If I remove blue belt, that's going out. Fantastic. And that'll also mean, um, strictly speaking, the unloader is not necessary. So when the bots come crawling back, as long as there's some inventory space here, uh, they'll be this will sort it all out automatically. Okay. We need cannon chest. We need a core mining drill. We need bulk rail loader. Fantastic. What else are we missing? Constant combinator, accumulator, and a bit of blue belt. Um, I'm going to set these really, really low because... We don't have that much, and every time, um, every time it tries to put it, like if we don't actually have enough express underneathies, for example, do we seriously have exactly one express underneathy? Bravna. So it's trying to put in two. We don't have another one, and it's going to stay on this indefinitely. Uh, do we have some red belt? We do. Do we have the means to easily make some underground reds? Probably not. Because we need yellow underneathy. We do have yellow underneathy. Okay. You know what? Why don't I just use yellow belt this time? See if we've got the yellow belt, actually. We don't have the loaders. Okay. So we'll use a red or blue loader. 
um, a little bit of transport belt, a little bit of underneathy, and is that all we need? A constant combinator if I didn't place it already, and an accumulator. Constant combinator, emulator, fantastic. Hopefully that's everything. You have red undies? Uh, nope, apparently not. I did go looking for them. And, uh, oh, we do. Dub. It's fine. Uh, okay. Do you wait longer than 15 seconds, actually? Um, turn this into a yellow, I guess. It's gonna be more than fast enough. And then... What the heck is this? There was an extra, like, logistic train stop input ghost. Where did I copy this from? That's so weird. How did that happen? That one's okay. And that one also has the ghost. Very, very strange. Uh, we're missing a couple of power poles. Let's head up here and give it some inactivity. Where are you going? Stop it, stop it, stop, 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 stop. Fantastic. One more drill. Three to go. I mean, it's not strictly necessary for it to be three, but... station you just said was unnecessary with the new unload filter inserter? Wait, what? Also, Shmua, good to see you again. Hope you're doing well. Oh, this? Yeah, uh, it's faster though to empty it this way, to reset it. So, I don't mind that. We'll get rid of the 60 second inactivity though. Okay. Uh, what's next? Ooh, all of our furnaces are active. Very, very nice. We've already got two and a half stacks of beryllium ingot. You love to see it. And I don't actually even know what we have it for yet. But we have it. We've got Vulcanite, we've got Iridite, we've got Cryonite, we've got Beryl, Beryllium. Uh, we don't have an infinite source of Holmanite, but we've got quite a lot of it on Hagen. Uh, and that's all, uh, except for Vitamelange. As far as metals go, that's all of the basic exotic ones. Uh, I haven't actually got... That's a big planet with not too many biters on it. Um, I haven't actually got an infinite source of rare metals, unless you count uh, core fragment processing, which, at this stage of the game at least, uh, we're really not struggling for rare metals. Although, I think I did actually make a... Uh, a mine for rare metals somewhere. We're actually short on hydrogen chloride for rare metals. I thought I made a better build for that. I did, but... Uh... But there's no water. Because we didn't connect the water inputs. Okay. 
not sure how it worked up to this point. Breaking force is 40% done. Fantastic. You've actually got infinite breaking so uh breaking force if you can just at the right moment uh make a train's destination disappear. So yeah, this water is going nowhere. Um, how about... How about we do it like this? That's going to go through where the big beacon is supposed to be. Uh, now I don't have pipes. Give to me the pipes. Thank you. Gonna go here and here. That actually connects to something. That's weird. And hydrogen chloride. Fantastic. Okay. That means we can get rare metals again. Not that I've felt the absence of them. Okay, I think now's as good a time as any. I might take a short break. Let's do a little LTN screensaver. Now that we've got more visibility. That kicked in quickly. And a bit of the old words. And we're good. Yep. All right, we'll start words on stream in about 30 seconds. I'll be back in a few minutes. Good luck, have fun, and I'll see you soon.
Hmm, that's a tricky one. Not many words. Okay, we unlocked Particle Collider and Energy 2. Oh, nicely done. Smashed it. Fantastic. Let's continue with SpaceX, shall we? What is Joey? Uh, for one thing, a Joey is a baby kangaroo. It's also a name, yeah. Alright, what should we do next? So we've got barrel sorted. I mean, we've got some barrel. And I have no need for barrel yet, so that's kind of nice. Um, oh right, we were trying to get more vulcanite. Um, so we've gone all the way up to 22 per second, almost. For our 25 megawatts more. That's fine, we have plenty of spare power. Um, do we have... we've still got some accumulators left. Good. Where should we go for our next core fragment? We've already got this one. No, we don't. Okay. Um... I wouldn't... Hmm. No, let's just do it like we did before. with a yellow belt. Oh, that's in the way. Uh, let's turn that around, actually. In fact, I think I should steal a different layout. Here we go. That's going to be much easier to adapt to whatever shape. And a little bit of belt, and some rail, and some corners, and some signals, and why don't we send our train down there? Uh, this way? Joey is Matt LeBlanc's character in Friends, indeed. Strange names are allowed? Wow. Apologize to all of the Joeys of the world. Nah, it's actually kind of a weird name. Let's be real. Okay, like this. And I like this. And do we actually not have signal signals? That's not great. Um, a regular signal up here. That should be okay. It's kind of hard to tell without being able to see the the sectors broken up. But let's move over here for now. We've got the range, but we don't have certain items. Are you telling me we just used our last drill? No, we didn't. So why isn't this loaded? Also, why a cargo... How it... What... What are packed cargo rocket sections doing in here? And ammo? 
I think crashed rockets, the construction train picks all this up. Hmm. If we could have a set filters blacklist that had like 20 items, it would be very easy to remove what's not supposed to be in here. Um, I th think instead of this, we should just do an active provider. And just once, um, let's just... Oops. That's, that's not right. Uh, let's just empty all of that. Alright, where's our train? What are we missing here? Uh, loader? We've got red loaders. We have belt, we have belt. For some reason we don't have delivery cannon. Um, I hope it's not because we've run out of bulk rail loaders. That would explain it. No, nope, we've got them. I don't understand. I also don't understand the decision making of this uh, belt loader. It goes from regular chain, uh, regular rails, yellow belt to regular rail signals, to uh, accumulators to regular rail signals to ye yellow belt to regular rail signals. Oh, it's probably emptying from the back here. And bots are trying to put stuff back in. Okay. If I turn these off for the moment, there we go. How many core seams are on your Vulcanite planet? Uh, I'm not sure, but it's more than enough to go well into diminishing returns. Um, can we search? I, don't, I think we thought of this already, and I don't have a way to search for core seams as far as I know. Uh, how about core fragment, vulcanite, entity? Oh, we figured it out. Okay, there's uh, 24 it looks like. Yeah, there's 24. Which is more than enough to go into, significantly into diminishing returns. Can you search for the icon? Yeah, we just searched for, what the? Well, if we search for core fragment Vulcanite as entity, it finds the core seams. Very, very nice. Last stack in chest, that is absolutely correct. Scale the summit. How many core scenes are on it? Uh, yep, 24. Uh, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, we've built all we can here. Let's go back. And once this is empty, I'll get rid of those belt. It was just yesterday that I learned that I can use factory search for resource patches on other planets, indeed. Very, very handy mod. Love it. Trotsky, good to see you again. Redcraft as well. How's up there? Up there? Wait, what? Up where? I'm not streaming from low orbit. Which up there are we talking about? Up in space. Oh, okay. This space. Uh, this space is going pretty well. We've still got our uh, minimal science spaghetti. Slowly churning through some research. Uh, but we've got... We've got the first rail block. So we can start... Uh, expanding our rail network in space. Have you been doing name and base? Yes. Uh, the uh, 
The redeem for that should be enabled. Yeah, I've enabled it. Incoming, indeed. Okay, so... Did we empty this? Nope. Still going. Do we have another... Active provider? That should actually be enough to empty this. Fantastic. Is that literally our last active provider? I think it is. Hmm, how about this? Much faster. Space rail block the same size? Yes. Uh, it needs to be the same dimensions because when we do the... Uh, let me just demonstrate. Well, I can't demonstrate enough really right now, but uh, when we place the space elevator... Um, the space elevator thing that appears in orbit is going to have the exact same coordinates. So it has to be snap to grid absolute. Um, if we want it to fit in a rail block. Slightly anticlimactic, it won't let me redeem it? Uh, anyone else able to? Maybe try refresh or something? It should be enabled. I mean, I just looked at it, it is enabled. Alright, is this empty now? Fantastic. And the construction bots from the train stole it. That's fine, it'll empty here. Okay, cool. Uh, is our storage actually... Oh my god, why do we have... What? <laughs> oh, no. oh. oh no. Oh no. Why do we have 156,000 single cylinder engines? Uh, yep, that's working. Oh god. How much iron did we send over here by by rocket? Because of that. That one mistake. Oh. Won't need to make those for a while. <laughs> yeah, I think... I think even if I send them back... Yes. Yes, it is. You know what I'm gonna do? Um, I, I, I think I might just send those back to Hagen. Check if you get something back from the Crusher? I don't think so. Why can't I search it? What? Isn't it called single cylinder engine? Single dash cylinder. This is what sucks about FNEI. Can't find it with the word engine. Can't find it with dash cylinder. Can't find it with single. Um... I... I literally just can't find it. Let's use factory search. Uh, where did I put it? Not, not factory search. Um, recipe book. What? Here we go. Single cylinder engine. Uh, this UI, honestly, is harder to follow. Is there a recipe that says, like, nothing? I don't even know if it can crush single-cylinder engines. Well, regardless...
It's like biomass, it's actually called specimen. Oh, right. So what's a single cylinder called? Uh, can't find biomass this way. Can we jump into the editor and biomass? Do we have to go debug mode? SE significant specimen, experimental specimen, specimen. Okay, so single cylinder is called motor. Does that find it in FNEI? It does. Alright, right click. Uh, nothing comes out of the crusher. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I want to send most of these back. But not necessarily all of them. Um, I guess I could... Here we go. Read from Logistic Network. Um, Decider Combinator. Thank you, Autosave. And if... Motor? I like how Motor doesn't actually find it here. Uh, if single cylinder engine greater than 10,000, we'll keep 10,000 here just in case. Uh, set requests. And we'll do input count so that the bots treat it with urgency. Oh. Are the cargo rocket sections going to make it, though? How about this? And this? What the heck is that connected to? Huh? Wait, what? Why is... I don't know why that would have been connected to... The big pole. Yeah, I really don't know. Okay. Uh, I want the same setting here. Uh, or a similar setting. Cargo rocket section has to be equal to 100. Before these go in. They have a filter slot in the rocket, so the rocket's fine. Uh, I think I removed it if I saw that at some point. Because I don't want to waste an inventory slot. Unless it's like invisible or automatically gets removed or something. I can't believe we have a hundred and... well, we ha it's already reduced by like 10k, 8k, um, but we had 156k single cylinder engines here because of one, one little active provider chest that I forgot about. Andy Gaming, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Don't waste it, it gets reset when the rocket is built, so can fill it up. That's nice. Um, so, I got a little distracted. Just just a tad. We've got... Thor name in base redemptions. Uh, does anyone have a preference? For which planet? Uh, at the moment, we're doing Granis and uh, Hagen. Most of them are on Hagen. I'm indifferent? Okay. You squirreled hard? Look, we, 
we I just realized we had hundreds of thousands too many of something. That's that needs attention. Okay, I am this guy. You were first. So wild card, that's not how that works. I just do it like this. Fantastic. Uh, next is Evil Pla. And then we've got El Pancho. Uh, after that is Scale the Summit. And that just barely fits, but not really. Let's put it down here. Squirrel, indeed. Hagen is cool. Fantastic. I accidentally set it aside a combinator to greater than instead of less than and made 15,000 assembly threes. <laughs> uh, don't worry, you'll, you'll, you'll go through those ev eventually. I wonder how many we have right now. Um, probably going to cost a bit of UPS to try and find out, and we're not going to actually see it because there's too many items here. We got the 999. Okay then. Okay then. I see how it is. It's perfectly, actually. Redcraft. Red Crafter. We got enough points now, let's go. Fantastic. Uh, how about... Over here. Fantastic. One time I made the mistake in C block and make warehouse full of warehouse. Oh no. That's, that's a little bit harsh. Okay. Trotsky, thank you very much for the sub. Much appreciated. Thank you. Good morning, t Hacks and chat. Uh, Ezria, welcome, welcome. Good to see you again. Hope you're doing well. Uh, let me just copy that and... Put this over here. And mark it off the list. Fantastic. Anyone else while we're at it? Uh, let's see. Can we get what we need to make another... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Another coal mining drill. The ad-free experience on Twitch is so much better. Yeah, I do absolutely minimize that um, as much as I can. But obviously, if you have the sub, it's going to be even less. Uh, thank you very much for the support, regardless. Oh, we were still building this one. Let's head down there. And time passed more than enough. We'll need some power poles. Uh, I don't think it's going to reach the substation. How about... Oh, it's so close. Let's pretend this is the reach of the power poles. And we don't have signals. We also don't have bulk rail loaders, which I don't understand. Um, we have them here. Oh, it's because we're trying to load something we don't have. Wait, what? 
That's probably the reason, but it's not fast loaders. One off, indeed. There we go. Okay, so what's it getting stuck on? It's loading most of it. Do we not have a combinator? We do. Uh, we don't have quite enough. We've only got eight more logistic train stops. Okay, I'm just going to set this to like two. So we can keep loading what we've got. I wish I could find an elegant way around this where if one item is missing, it'll give up. Um, it's actually, in this specific instance, a little bit inconvenient that we've got four filters on the stack filters. Then again, if I did give them four filters, would they just pick up the first thing? I'm not sure. But to control the stack size, I need to be looking at something specific. But then, if they overload, this will output the extra. But if it doesn't precise load, it'll go around in circles. Okay, good talk. Let's head over here. Ten seconds. Sh oh, wait, 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 no. Let's go here first. And then over here. And that should hopefully be all it takes to get this stuff built. Let's have a look at the rail blocks. Why is this one busted? Hold up, could you stop for a sec? And away you go. And it still looks busted. Why is that? Alright, looks like this thing should be working though. Fantastic. Uh, please wait here for a sec. And it is still flashing. What is up with that? Well, we don't actually really strictly need that rail signal. Oh, I think it's confused by this. Why is it confused by this? It works if it's a chain signal? Am, am I missing something, or is that really strange? The exact same position. If this is a chain signal, it's happy. You need one on the triangle. Oh, like here? No, this one would be confused. I'd need, like, two. But this is, this is in the exact same spot. Uh, but this signal's happy, but if it's a regular signal, it does the flashy thing. Very strange, but it's functionally perfect. It's how they work? I thought I had mastered train signals a long time ago, but apparently... Apparently there's more. I think we've got six of these now. That is 24 core fragments per second. How's our power look? Uh, we're actually going through most of the day before we hit a maximum accumulator charge now. Although the next one might be a bit different, because... Wait, what? I didn't put an accumulator here. Um, is that okay? 
Maybe if this is the last drill we put in. I get that issue with signals if I copy paste signal and it's pasted in the wrong orientation. I didn't paste it though, I was like placing it. But that is interesting. Neb, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, it's going to bug me like crazy if just one of these drills is not power controlled. So let's bring this down here. And add an accumulator. And we give it the usual setting. Accumulated charge has to be greater than 80%. Fantastic. Okay. Um, I'll give it a, a few minutes and we'll have a look at the uh, the power graph and see if it would make sense to add any, any more drills. Um, but that's increased our that that's increased our core fragment throughput by maybe twenty percent, I think. And until we can get obscene amounts of power over here, I, I don't want to bother with nuclear power. Not while it costs so much to send stuff. Well, then again, I could just shove it in the existing cargo rockets. But it's a waterless planet. But we do have steam turbine. Uh, sorry, condenser turbines. It might be worth considering. Nuclear power with condenser turbines on this planet. I could even just process some uranium from here. Um, so that we can do a lot more coal mining. It's either that or mine vulcanite directly and process it on the spot. Which is such a, a massive pain. I really don't want to make giant outposts. Um, I'd rather make it to the later game where we can have really small ones. Um, but let's have a look at our vulcanite block production. It's been pretty consistent lately. About 389 per minute. That's almost two... Uh, yeah, almost two stacks a minute. I can live with that. Why did you build your main base on a different planet instead of Nalvis? A number of reasons. The Clash. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. How far from elevator? Uh, at least seven minutes. So... Uh, the number one reason that I set our main base at Hagen. Shipping crushed vulcanite is not too bad. I might have a think about that. Uh, possibly more than 10, yes. Uh, so later in the game, uh, spoiler alert, we're going to have access to an anomaly, which happens to be the exact same pretty short distance from every interstellar location in the game. Um, it is 10,000 distance from the, the part of the solar system that, where it says interstellar map, where it sends you back to here. Um, so if you travel from here to the anomaly called Foenestra, and then to whatever solar system you're going to. Uh, it's actually, it's probably shorter than going from Calidus to Kalmea. It's very, very short. Um, in Space Exploration, the mod uh, that we're playing right now, the distance within solar systems compared to the interstellar distance is a lot more than you would expect. Uh, it's not like real space where 
The distance from Nalvis to Calidus Asteroid Belt is an unimaginably small speck compared to the distance between Calidus and, let's say, uh, Simeus. Uh, it's actually more like if Nalvis was still our main base, the travel time and distance to go down here and then down here to the interstellar map uh, is actually probably about the same as the distance from here to here. Um, it's a lot more than you would expect. So having our main base close to the interstellar map like this uh, is actually a really, really big advantage when we're using spaceships. Even if we don't use the anomaly, but with the anomaly, it's just the difference in distances is more uh, extreme. Um, and I would build a main base at the anomaly itself, although that's kind of late in the game to be shifting your main base. Uh, but putting that aside... Um, the reason I don't do that is we need a planet surface to use productivity modules in anything except for the space labs. Uh, so that leaves planets that are close to the interstellar map. And it you could probably find a planet closer to the interstellar map than Hagen is, maybe. But it doesn't get much better than this. And finally, it also gives us access to an exotic resource, uh, in this case cryonite, in infinite supply without going to another planet, which is pretty handy at the start of the game. Uh, so those are the several reasons uh, why I moved to Hagen. Brachiostrochrone trajectories. I'm I'm googling that word. Don't think I worked. The curve upon which a body moves in the least possible time from one given point to another. Yes. Yeah, we're not we're not gonna see any uh, orbital mechanics in this mod either. Um, but there are some assumptions about space that uh, really aren't true in this mod. Like, the distance within solar system is actually a significant chunk of the journey, um, depending. Thanks for the explanation. You're welcome. Also, except for the space elevator, launching to orbit cost depends on the planet size. Smaller planet, less rocket fuel cost. Yeah. Um, and Hagen is relatively small, but still big enough to have a decent amount of resources. Uh, Nalvis is 5.7k radius, Hagen is 3.8. So we're kind of at a sweet spot between getting a decent amount of space and resources on the planet. Like, this is, this is definitely big enough for... well, I, I probably shouldn't do that. Uh, this is definitely big enough for however big our base is going to get on this planet. Um, and it's also got plenty of resources to exploit. Um, but it's also relatively cheap to get on and off planet. Just went all out with elevators, yeah. There is a maintenance cost with the space elevators. I believe it's... I expect it's probably cheaper on a smaller planet, but that said, my understanding is um, the, the upkeep cost of space elevators is extremely cheap compared to the utility you get from them. Small planets, best planets? Cheaper on small planets and cheaper on the down trip. That makes sense, I guess. I mean, yeah, intuitively it makes sense. I couldn't show you the math to prove it, that's for sure. Okay, 
what should we be doing? Uh, probably building another... Oh, that's right. I was going to look at the power on... Oh. What? Huh? Okay, what? Oh, this one's not powered. This is still on manual. I never actually launched it. There we go. Have an oil planet with radius 500? Uh, that's probably still enough, right? Is it next to Nalvis? I think it's always an oil moon next to Nalvis. Why have I got... Huh? Uh, I think I forgot I was going to scan Eshu. Uh, where's the scan button these days? Oh, here it is. Scan surface. Uh, we've got a 1177 radius. Biter meteors. That's unfortunate. Crude oil moon. Is that the only crude oil moon we've got? It is. Uh, but yeah, if we want infinite crude oil, because we're playing K2, um, technically we need to come here. Uh, unless we go interstellar. It is a very small planet. Not as small as 500. But still, we can make, we can take big chunks out of the, the scanning that we need to do just by panning around. It's in Outer Calidus. Powering my entire empire. Nice. Um, I'll probably... Why was I scanning this, though? I don't remember. I don't think we're going to go here for the oil core fragments that soon. It's not like we're going to run out of oil anytime within the next, I don't know, 50 hours. Uh, let's trim surface. Or delete surface. Left click to confirm. Okay, cool. Um, that means there won't be extra biters on it. So there's, actu there's actually basically no biters on it, except that they come in by media, which means if we leave that scanned, it's going to be full of biters later on. Uh, but yeah, I was before I got distracted by this particular squirrel, um, I was going to check on the power... Oh, wow. Uh, I, we've got way more power to spare than I thought. Okay, more drills. Let's go. Uh, where are we going to add our next one? Probably over here. Is this one active? It's not. Okay. I don't think we're going to go over this way, so... We could just expand this, like so and put that right about here uh get some power poles I don't hate making these outposts as much, because I know I'm only going to have to do it once uh, for each core mining drill. Right, let's bring our construction train down this way. Das House. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I think it was for the Immer site. Uh, what was? I had a look at Naquium processing in 0.6. It looks a little frightening. Uh-oh. Yeah, I think a few things look a little frightening this time. Why is that backward? Uh, and then we put down the 
accumulator and we connect and we say accumulator charge has to be greater than 80 and this is already configured perfect fantastic Uh, how many drills are we up to now? I think it's six? It is seven. So we're actually getting just under 26 core fragments per sec. Fantastic. How many of these single cylinders have we gotten rid of? About half. Um, and I think... I think we're bottlenecked on... Oh no! We're bottlenecked on this poor inserter getting rid of the single cylinder engines. Um, let's go pay that one a visit. Poor inserter? I know. Oh, here we go. Okay. How about you put things on the near side? Or perhaps I could... Leave this as is and do... Filtered... extra output that so we'll know to remove later very easily. That's nine tenths of one stack per second output. So we'll actually be a bit short on we do have single cylinders in the rail network, right? Yeah, we do. Alright, so that'll sort itself out. Uh, we might need to add an awful lot of storage to the mall, at least for a while. Um, but yeah, our Vulcanite is actually going to bottleneck on getting rid of these single-cylinder engines for just a little bit longer. A little inserter that could, indeed. Okay, while that's happening, let's get back to expanding Vulcanite core fragments. Um... How many more drills do we have? Uh, we've got nine, which is really more than we need um, to make our power start to cry and to really get into diminishing returns. How much rail do we have? 5.1k. Seems a good. I think over here would make sense. And I could be very, very lazy. With the, uh... With the rail layout here. Probably have some signals. Uh, 
Uh, well, let's get our train down here first. Inactivity... One minute. In case I decide to do something else. Uh, we'll need substation... Accumulator... Uh... We don't actually have room for the loader here. Wait, can I actually put a loader like this? Would that just instantly put it in here? I want to find out. Um, but also, I don't know how I would do the limiter if we're going to do it like that. I could have, like, a decider combinator that says if, um, if accumulator charge greater than X output provides stack threshold, but no, nah, let's just move this over. Okay. Also, that needs to be, I think, red. And we've got some yellow belt handy. It's more than fast enough. Alright, train. Head over this way, please. You can mine into the chest directly. Yeah, it's just not lined up quite right for that. What? No, stop, 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 stop. Uh, actually, before you do... This way. There we go. Okay, please move up. And manual. And please move up again. And manual. Wait, no, stop. Shift left click. Oh, to set the... It's control left click to set the uh, temp stops. Or was that a different question? How to build blueprints when there are annoying elements on the map? Yeah, shift left click. So if I try to left click this, nothing happens. Uh, if I shift left click, they'll delete the rocks or whatever. Why does... wait, no, come back, come back, come back. Over here, please. And wait for inactivity. Uh, I think we're out of bulk rail loaders. And possibly chests as well. We are out of bulk rail loaders. Okay. Why don't we finally do an auto crafter? Uh, of the manual request variety. I'll probably... Oh, we do have a uh, crafting combinator here. Okay, can I replace that with... a lighted substation? Will it keep the wire connection? It does. Very nice. Uh, and I don't think we have these speed modules available. Um, but yeah, let's say we want bulk rail loader. That's 10. Pulse that in. And I've actually got crafting combinator set to only check every 30 seconds. Partly for UPS reasons, but also um, because without any extra... Um, Without any extra wiring, I actually want them to overshoot their targets a little bit. Oh, we don't have a requester chest. 
Fantastic. Do I have a spare lying around somewhere? Not really. Uh, if I borrow from this, I do. Do you still harvest resources from Nalvis, or have you abandoned it completely? Yes. Uh, we're, we're still getting a trickle from Nalvis. Um, sometimes I find... Yeah, here we go. Sometimes I find this stuff is busted. Um, not sure why. What happened here? I think this part was wired wrong. No? Push to the front if there's greater than 2k. That should have worked. Uh, I'd kind of like to know when a train comes to pick up from here. Hmm. So because of one little error like that, the entire train network is backed up. We're dumping iron that came from four fragments. Um, if it gets completely full in here, it'll output uh, to make landfill. If the landfill ever somehow... It's actually most of the way there already. If the landfill is actually is ever completely backed up, it'll actually start getting rid of the landfill as well. Um, all right, there's enough for a train to pick up from here, but judging by the fact that we've got six million trains picking up iron, um, I don't think that's going to happen for a while, because this is actually a Huh? Oh, it's a higher priority pickup. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. We bring our uh, infinite resources that we don't have room for anywhere else here. Um, if it gets completely full, we trash it. But we have a high priority pickup so that... Hopefully it gets taken away to get put to use before that happens. Um, I just don't understand why... If the back has more than 2k, we push it to the front. Oh, this whole thing is allowed to fill up a lot. Well, that shouldn't be a problem. If there's at least 81 stacks of iron ore here, allow a train to pick it up. If there's more than 40 stacks on this side, push it to the front. And there was lots of iron here. I don't understand how this train got stuck. Trying to make stations that work for long trains and short trains is surprisingly annoying. I've done it with the uh, with the lazy mind design, but I really don't want to have resources having to go round in circles forever as a standard at our stations. Well, I'll just have to look again sometime to try and figure it out when it breaks. Okay, did we get those bulk rail loaders, or are we missing some input? We are missing gears. I could actually make the gears here. So if I uh, reset our memory cell... Oh, we did make three. Fantastic. Uh, say I put negative seven in here. 
Wait, what? Hold on. Input signals negative seven. Huh? I think this should be anything greater than zero. There we go. Um, products finished 17. Yeah, it actually made extra. Oh, that's why it made extra because it doesn't respond quickly because of the settings I have for crafting combinator. So this did count negative one when it output and we ended up with negative on the memory cell. That makes sense. Okay. Uh, let's make some gears. How about 2,000? That was incredibly good timing. Just when the crafting combinator checked for a refresh. Alright, do we have everything in here? We've got delivery cannon chest, constant combinator, bulk rail loader. Uh... Seems a good. Let's see if it can finish the job. Fortunately, I can't follow it with Navsat to check what's in the inventory. it has the drill. It does have the drill. Fantastic. Okay, A greater than 80. And all of that should work. Once the accumulated charge goes up. Where's our next drill going to be added? Probably over here. Um, I could actually bring it across this way. If we want to be a little bit lazy. That's a lot of core fragments. I don't think we're bottlenecking on actually making... Uh-oh. Cargo rocket sections zero. Yeah. I think we overdid asking for cargo rocket sections to be delivered. Which one's going to Granus? It's this one. It's got plenty of cargo rocket sections, it's just not full yet. Why is... Why is iron going around in a circle? Oh, I think I know why. I think it's the, the crafting that's happening on Granus right now. The iron gets pulled in over here, and then it changes how much iron is in the system. We're at 30k right now. I think our target is 60k. 50k, that's one full cargo rocket. So there should be 20k exactly, or close to it. Yep. There's like 20k iron in this cargo rocket. So it's at, it's pretty much at the exact amount of iron that's supposed to be in here, and that keeps changing. Uh, and because of... Well, it is actually a shortage of cargo rocket sections, though. We've got none left. Where's our build? I, I see, like, two bots moving here. Um, I actually see everything in motion in our cargo rocket silo build. Oh, sorry, not a uh, uh, cargo rocket section. So we actually need to double this, I think. Uh, we're only getting, like, one cargo rocket section every four seconds. I could put some beacons in. I'd have to move the substations to put them in efficiently. 
but that might be the way to go. Or I could just copy this whole thing. That might be good too. And that gives us more capacity to expand it easily later on. It also means we have this build uh, close to its twin. It happened very suddenly, at least as far as I noticed. Uh, that we couldn't keep up with the packed cargo rocket sections anymore. Let's get our construction train over here. And why don't I go back to the mall, apropos of anything else. Oh, I think cargo rocket sections are on their way. Uh, that's one. <laughs> okay. That's four. That's four. Well... They're making the rounds. I think that's cargo rocket sections coming back to the mall and then getting put back somewhere else. Uh, Alright, how does this build look? I doubt we have enough prod threes to... Wow, we have zero. Okay. That's a lot worse than I thought it would be. We do have 120 here, that must be 150 in the train as well, so it's not as bad as it sounds. Um, but to prod 3 all of that, or most of it, might be a bit much for the moment. So I think we'll go prod 2s again. how much of this we can finish. Uh, we need some 2x2 two two chests. I remember that these ones here were sort of only necessary because of an accident. Well, apparently it's not that unusual. Let's leave it. Uh, but yeah, we need a bunch of 2x2 two two containers. I think I'll remove all of the 2x2 two two storages in this section. And that just leaves... 30 and 24 greens and reds. Um, might be easier if we just handcraft this. Got that improved cargo rocket recipe? How far into the tech tree is it? Uh, good question. We have... We do have beryllium plate cargo rocket sections. Um, but I think it's going to be a while before I we get our first train load of beryllium plate. We're like almost a quarter of the way to starting to get a trickle of plate with this build. Um, because we're going to have a train load of ingot available first as a high priority. Maybe I could change the priorities so the plate is a higher priority. So that we don't have so much sitting idle. Um, I could also just steal some ingots. To get it going temporarily first. But let's see. It's, um... It's all of the same inputs, plus 8 plate. And we get double? Seriously? It's the same rate of building. Okay, that's insane. We need to do that. Um, especially considering how little effort we need to put into actually changing the build. Uh, I'll, I'll finish this build first. 
And then, well, I kind of want it to be able to do regular cargo rocket sections as a backup. Uh, that's a little tricky. Unless I just spam both at the same time, or... I don't know how to go about it. Which way I prefer. So let's hope we can get a good throughput of beryllium plate. Um, it seems like we're able to keep this saturated. We got 62k pyroflux, that's a really good sign. So we're getting 0.32 ingots per second, um, which translates to like, oh, 10 times that, uh, 3.2 plate per second. Okay, so if we go double this, um, it's like 0.5 cargo rocket sections per second. So a quarter. We need two beryllium plate per second to keep up. That's not a whole lot. And how much plate did I say we're making? More than two? 3.2 per second. Yeah, uh, we could actually... I'm going to have to change this logic so that we're not waiting for a train load of ingots. Um, in fact, I think for the moment we'll just completely ignore the possibility of sending beryllium anywhere by ingot. Um, and we'll just add... Let's do this right now. I need more chests though for the second build. I am very pleasantly surprised that we can keep up with this. Of course, if we run out of cargo rocket sections, we won't keep up with this, which is all the more reason we need to urgently fix it. Okay. Um, I don't want all of these parts to vomit out, so I'm going to try and change it this way. And I think it's probably still going to do something like that. Yep. Okay. Uh, and this one, and this one. SF Hobbit, thank you very much for the raid. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Welcome, raiders. How was your stream today? There's your shout out. Fantastic. Uh, we're just about to upgrade our cargo rocket section recipe to use beryllium plate. Why couldn't I? There we go. Is that all of them? I think it is. Could do one build with the new recipe, have priority at the LTN provider station. That is a point, but I don't want that much sitting idle. Um, I could also use crafting combinators, but I kind of just can't be bothered, to be honest. Let's add a beryllium plate over here. Boggles, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Wait, I think you were here before. Okay. Uh, so this is just going to be beryllium plate. Uh, where is beryllium plate? There it is. And we are going to request... Uh, how much? I think it's stack size 200, so 16k. Uh, brilliant plate is two train loads. No, that's um, that's one train load. 
So the train wouldn't come with more until it totally run out. So let's do 20k. Um, and I seriously doubt that we've got 20k here already. So let's temporarily drop the provide threshold and get a delivery to happen. That's taking longer than usual. Did, did I... Brilliant plate... Provide stack threshold 1. Train length 3 or 4. Wire is connected. What about here? Brilliant plate 20k, stack size 200. Uh, 16k is one whole train load. Request stack threshold 80. 80 times 200 is 16k. Uh, are we that short on trains? It's possible. Where's our new depot? Or newer depot? Yeah, I think we're short on trains. Oh yeah. Okay. Time to add some trains. What are you doing? How did you end up with seven electric furnaces? Okay. Um, how about... How about this, then? I have no idea how that happened. Oh, I think I can probably guess, actually. Anyway, uh, let's go with... Uh, LCCL train. Fantastic. Hopefully, when I turn around, I'll see Beryl coming here. We do not. Uh, why don't I just set this to a massively high provide priority? And off you go to the depot. Could do one build with... Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I thought about that. Uh, I want this working as quick and easy as possible, though. Fantastic. And once more. Let's do five new trains and see if they catch up. I still don't see barrel being delivered. Wow, that's a lot of stuff that's still in these um, still in these unloaders, actually. In fact, I think every time I look here, it's still unloading, which is a bit surprising considering how slow most of this is. Well, regardless, let's update new build over here. How is that train still there? Oh, these two are, like, emptying. But there's no bots. Okay. Well, there's your problem. Uh, I actually need to seed it with 50 logi bots. And we're going to need a few more green chests over here. Oh, also, I was going to remove the storage strong boxes. There we go. So, what are we missing? 10 and 24. The 2x2 two two chests. Do we now have barrel being delivered? Oh my god, that's a lot. 
I'm not clicking on all those. No, sir. Hey, there's our barrel. All right, it's not that much, but we don't need that much. Um, that'll keep the new recipes going for a little while. Uh, but we need to update these chests. So that one... And this one. And this one. Fantastic. Let's get rid of these. Most of them are actually empty. Very nice. Oh my god, let, let me... Stop, stop. That's a lot faster. So it looks like we've updated all of the chests that we need to. Fantastic. Alright, let's copy this over to the new build. Nice. And we can probably... I was going to say we could probably go ahead and change the settings on this, but not until we get some barrel in the other station, I think. We'll turn off this one for a sec. And apparently I have... Oh, I stole a bunch of steel. That's why. All right. We need 10 more green chests. Uh, we need some space in the old inventory. There we go. Five more green chests. And it was like 20 something. 24. Is it steel the bots are bringing me for that? I also need four of these. It's taking longer than I thought to handcraft. Uh... Oh, I was going to say it looks like we're missing some inserters, but no. I think that's fine. It's the passive providers that we don't have right now. And it's either five or ten more that I have to handcraft. Uh, ten more. There we go. So I just stand here for a minute. That'll get done. Uh, it really does take a while for the bots to catch up to these trains. But I'm pretty sure... Oh. Oh no. Uh, let's uh, get some more strong boxes over here. Maybe another lot. Not sure what my construction bots are doing.
What a mess. Oh, they're still trying to pick up all this stuff. Okay. Let's just stand near the storage and put things into our, uh, into our trash slots that belong here. And the bots can do it this way. Or maybe if I stand in the middle, that'll be the sweet spot. Or maybe if I go over here, fill my inventory, and then walk next to the chests. Fantastic. I hope I didn't just put something here that doesn't belong, like blue processing units. Oh, they would have brought it back to me. Fantastic. Okay, looks like the bots can catch up now. And over here, we got five more red chests to go. Uh, and apparently one more storage chest. Nice. Alright, so apart from Beryl, we've cut in half. Well, not exactly in half, because of some of the prereqs, uh, but we've... No, I, th I think it actually does work out that way. Uh, because of this recipe, um, we actually cut in half the inputs of everything except for barrel or cargo rocket sections, and we can make them at the same rate. And now we actually need to get barrel delivered here. That would help. Why don't I give the bots a hand? Where do green circuits go? see if this is all working. Uh, do we have any beryllium plate? We do. This should already be working. The bots just have to catch up with the avalanche of trains. Because this is a new build that requires lots of different resources. Maybe I should hand deliver a couple of things, like barrel. It's not barrel that's the problem right now. The thing is, we've got a lot bottlenecked on cargo rocket sections right now. There we go. Looks like the first block is fully functional again. Used shift C. I was thinking that, except if I don't empty all of the iron, for example, out of here, Shift C will put it back. Um, yeah, some of the heat shielding. Oh, it's probably still better. Yeah, okay, that's that helps. Especially if I move down here. Looks like beryllium plate is slowing down for some reason. Why is it slowing down? We saw like this machine struggling a little bit in our test environment, but I saw all of these working before and 
Oh, inputs are totally saturated. So I'm not exactly sure what's happening here. Hmm. Let's check the old graph. Beryllium plate. Uh, if I can, if I can click on it. There we go. Oh, that's been super consistent because it's literally just these two machines eating, uh, eating all of the ingots. Let's check ingots instead. What? What? what no, ingots. Ingots. There we go. Uh, ingots are actually also super consistent. There's just a pattern to them. All right, cool. One half belt I backed up at the splitter to the left. One half belt is backed up. Uh, one half belt back. Oh, this is correct. This is fine. Um, so sand. Uh, it's only half the sand is the difference, but like we're actually net positive on sand. We're using the sand that we get as a side output from the first. Uh, process, the first step, uh, to supply to the casting machines that make the ingots, um, but we're actually still 0.35 sand per second positive, which we get more than that uh, from this side, so I just took the sand here, priority output, uh, to where we do the casting. And the rest goes to the rail network for priority pickup. Mobile suit, everything's tiny. Fair enough. I'll try zooming in a bit more. Uh, but yeah, that's actually looking really good. I'm pretty sure a beryllium plate can't last like this, though. Um, let's see. 19.2 ingots per minute. Uh, we can consume 30 per minute with these two. One would have not quite kept up. We would have been positive on ingots, despite turning them into plate. So I think... Well, it's times 10. That's pretty easy math with a base 10 system. Uh, we're going to be looking at... I can't believe it's been over an hour since we did the ingots. It's like almost two hours, actually. Uh, so 192 plate per minute. And I'll just double check for the last time. We need... I saw iron, I thought it was an uh, beryllium plate. That was scary. Uh, we need... 96 beryllium plate per minute. Whoops. Nope. So yeah, we should have way more plate uh, than we need to keep going with this new doubled cargo rocket section throughput. Fantastic. Oh, and this is... Yeah, this is the new block. It's already... It's already churning out cargo rocket sections at full speed. Nice. Alright, how much plate do we have here? 98. And several hundred. Okay. Let's turn this one back on. And we're making the plate... How fast? Uh, a stack and a half per minute. It's going to be a little while before we get a delivery. If I set it to 80 stacks. So, 
I'll leave this on like a stack threshold of, let's make it half a cargo wagon. Um, and hopefully that'll not cause any fluctuations in cargo rocket section production, but not spam quite so many trains. And we'll bump this up a bit later when it's completely stabilized. Let's check the graph for cargo rocket section. Uh, how about packed, actually, specifically? There was a really big dip, and now it's gone up. Uh, it's kind of hard to say at this point. How about regular cargo rocket sections? It's so much spikier than it was before. Because we've got all these slow machines doing minute-long recipes with prod modules uh, that, that output two cargo rocket sections at a time. That's okay. Uh, as long as... Let's see, eight, uh, what are we looking at? 20 or so per minute, 15 per minute if we look at the last hour. Fantastic. And most importantly, the whole reason we're doing all of this, uh, I don't see any deliveries. It's going to take a little bit longer than that. Oh, it's actually almost done. Uh to get another delivery of cargo rocket sections. Nice. Alright. Uh, are we just about done chasing bottlenecks for a minute? I should probably go get some more vulcanite core fragments coming in. Let's look at the power graph. We've still got lots of spare power. So let's get another drill going. Maybe over here? The individual drills are getting really slow, so it's probably fine if we expand out this way. Um, might be good to put in some more signals just in case, even so. But I could probably ignore those and do this. Okay, how about here, and loader, oh, there it goes, and accumulator, and substation. And power poles. Seems good. And rail. Like this. Fantastic. Double check that we've got everything we need. Looks a good. Let's move train down this way. Actually, it's probably going to pick up core fragments if I park it exactly there. Uh, where did it go? Move over here instead. In you go. Let's 
this is going to be all kinds of fun. Waiting several seconds and then moving the train up over and over again. Unfortunately, I can't give it a command to just slowly roll forward. But it's better than having to go back over there before we have Spider-Trons. Ooh, you know what's scary? Uh, if the train somehow ran out of fuel, I would actually have to go over there to fix it. Terrifying. What are they doing? Almost there. Just a few more hops. This would be a lot better if I had given this train the vehicle robopods back then. But I haven't been back to Granus. Oh, no, 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 no. I haven't been back to Granus since uh, I was reminded that those exist. Also, our inventory is full. That may be a problem. Almost in range. That should actually do it. Wait for inactivity. 15 seconds. And we should have everything we need. The drills are down to one third effectiveness now. Individually. Uh, how many drills do we have? Let's double check. I think it's going to be nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It takes three to the power of two drills to get the equivalent of the first drill three times. So we're now at 29.474 Vulcanite Core Fragments per second. Uh, I expect that our power system will be able to handle it. Um, whether our core... Uh, whether our cargo rocket sections can keep up I think they probably can, but it's going to take some time to find out because we fell behind. Math, indeed. Could run the build trains on nuclear, then it would never be a problem. Oh yeah. Then nuclear trains. Nuclear locomotive, is it? We should have way more than enough barrel, or should we? Ooh, our barrels actually run out. Um, do we have cargo rocket sections? We don't. I think this is might be where I first noticed. I actually have a rocket here. Um, you know what? As long as we're not yet going back to mine the raw imasite, uh, why don't we just use this rocket to send some barrel? Since it got the cargo rocket sections anyway. And that way we can be pretty damn confident uh, if we weren't already, that we're not going to run out of cargo rocket sections made out of barrel before we send some back.
Yep. We don't have any cargo rocket sections to spare until we get another delivery. Okay. I could go and put prod 3s in just the cargo rocket section builder things. Um, and I could probably double them in this block. Because all of the other inputs are effectively halved. I think we should probably do that. It's going to look a tiny bit tacky, but who cares. How many prod 3s do we have? Zero. Cool. Uh, I've got 33 on me. I know there's hundreds at the construction train. So that's not that big of a deal. Okay. It's up here. So we want, well first we want prod 3s in here, and then we want another one of these here, and here, where's the output going to be? I don't think we can fit the output no matter where I put this, unless I just tack some more down here. Uh, that might not be the worst idea. So we got 12 already, right? Uh, yeah, 12. This is so tacky. That's right. And I think I should actually move that over a little bit. We can at least make it symmetrical. And then don't forget the prod threes in the existing Oh, did I run out of prod 3s? Oh no. Also... 12... 12... I built it in this shape so that I could fit everything under a wide area beacon, but uh, we really just need to improve it right now. Okay. Uh, there's no more prod 3s here, but if I hand deliver some vulcanite, there will be. We only need like 12 times 4 plus 3. 51, I think. And we get four per stack. It'll take a little minute to make them though. the rate. Uh, per minute, 19... 
So we're looking at three minutes. Okay. Let's look back over here for the moment. Uh, looks like this is working. Should see a train schedule to pick this up pretty soon, actually. I didn't actually balance it. How many of these did I make that mistake with? This is full as hell. Um, yeah, we're not sending Vulcanite Core Fragments back because we don't have the cargo rocket sections. Uh, okay. still think it's a good idea to set these limits. The trains will be able to keep up with them easily, so it's not like not letting them fill up is going to be bad for throughput. Okay, so we're well and truly for the moment, uh, beyond what the cargo rockets can keep up with, uh, Vulcanite, but that's because we had a dip in, well we didn't so much have a dip in cargo rocket section production, it's we didn't notice that we'd exceeded our capacity. So now we're looking at... how many? Uh, what? Oh, I see. 15.8. Um, what? Oh, this is about the same rate, but because I put prod 3s in, this is actually about the same rate as before, except we get more out of our resources. I can live with that. Uh, we've actually run out of barrel, apparently. Sort of. It's just the new chests don't have them because I asked for a whole stack in all of these other ones. These ones are doing a lot better. Cargo rocket section, point four. Oh, because I haven't put the prods in yet. Uh, we've got like half what I said we needed. Okay. I don't think there's anything left to do on Granis right now. I should probably check the energy beams. Uh oh. 8.89 gigawatt peak power, 71 gigajoules over 120 seconds. I don't think our accumulators can handle that. So tomorrow we need to go to Granis to make, um, uh, to make a steam battery. Unless we're capable of doing that remotely. I'm actually rather curious. Steam. Wait, 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 wait. Was our first steam battery made out of just regular old steam turbines? Uh, yes, but what I meant to ask was steam engines. But yeah, steam turbines are what we need. It might even be a better idea... ...to use condenser turbines, since it's a waterless planet. Can we make condenser turbines? 
Well, let's have a pee before I try and just queue it up. Condenser. Big electric, LDS, storage tank, glass, and steam engine. I've got the glass. We've got a few storage tanks. I'd have to make some more. Big electric, we've got 272 left, so no, we can't make them at scale. I think I should just take a rocket over there. Um, in order to save some cargo rocket sections, I could take the next rocket over. So, let's put together... We've got 64 steam turbines. Um, is it always going to be 0.89 gigawatt peak power, 71 gigajoules for Granus? I would have thought it would be more powerful than Nalvis, since it's closer to the sun. Uh, 0.89 gigawatt peak power. That's the main thing we have to worry about. The rest we can just make sure we make more than enough steam. I think it's constant per planet. Okay. So 0.89 gigawatts. How many steam turbines is that? At 5k steam. Condenser turbines rather. Uh, let's have a look in the editor. Uh, I guess I need to actually put some 5k steam in. Oh, it only stop. It stops being good at 415. Is that right? Higher temperatures decrease steam consumption instead of increasing power. Okay, so it's 10 megawatt per per condenser turbine, uh, which means uh, 0.9 gigawatts, that's 900, right? So 90? Let's check. 5, 10... Uh, that would be 90. And we give them the 5k steam. Let me move this over first so I can configure it. Temperature, 5,000. Uh, and then we need some... How about a substation pylon? And maybe something to consume power. It doesn't take five... Oh, it takes 900 maximum. Okay. Uh, really? I thought we made 5k back on Nalvis. Uh, did they nerf condenser turbines? Max temp 4.15. No, this, I mean, maybe yes, but the steam turbines are actually even weaker. I mean, they too can put out 10 megawatt. Um, it's not very clear. Let's empty our inventory a little bit. Steam turbine. It doesn't have any anywhere near as much text here. Max temp 415 degrees. Uh, giving it 500 worked, I think. Back on the old Alvis. So this is 500 degrees. Ragamuffin, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Didn't you set the pipe on output? Uh, this can be input or output. 
on the... Oh, the condenser turbine's different. I forgot. Good point. Let's have a peek. Yeah, I think you're right. We can't line them up like this. Uh, that's going to make fitting 900 of them together a bit more awkward. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure the 5k steam is just not going to help. Yeah, it won't actually take it as an input. Max is 900. I don't think we can actually make 900 steam without shenanigans. Which I did actually figure out at the end of last playthrough. I was kind of looking forward to using it, but uh, I'm pretty sure we had a look and found that those shenanigans to combine very precise amounts of steam at different temperatures uh, to make temperatures that you can't select here. Well, it actually would be relevant, theoretically, if we wanted to make 900 degree steam to input to this. I went to the trouble of making a system that would very, like, literally precisely... Data Gnome, thank you very much for the sub. Much appreciated. Thank you. Fantastic indeed. Thank you so much for the four months. Um, I basically made a system that would make a, a specific amount of each temperature of steam, and then combine them uh, for a precise uh, 900 degree. Um, that was to get more power out of the condenser turbines. The only advantage that would have here is we don't need as much steam. Um, like, we can, we can store our steam energy a bit more densely. But who cares when we can store ludicrous amounts of steam in very large containers. It's still going to take the same amount of energy. Um, steam above 415 degrees is consumed slower for the same amount of power. So I think we're just give it going to give it 500 degrees steam. And that's still not working. Why not? We've got a power consumer, we've got power connector. We've got steam input. Oh, because it's got the 5k steam here, that's why. So it was, like, blocked. Yeah, there we go, that's working. Okay, so how do we put... Uh, nine, and I almost said 900, 90 of these together. Let's make it 100 just to be super safe. Also because it's a round number. Um, I guess... I kind of want to use the large storage tanks because they're going to fit together so well. And that'll reduce, um, difficulty for water to flow around. So we want 10 by 10, right? And we could do the steam input like this. It's coming together very, very quickly. Um, like that. How many is this? 8, 9, 10? 10 by 10 is looking rather tall, though. How about... Um, how about a more square shape? Or even... Maybe like this? 20 by 5? Uh, I kind of want to see... Which way, which, which way is which? 
it renders it the same way regardless. Okay, this this one is Steam. And this one is water. Uh, 20 times 4... How, how else does 100 divide? I want to do like 18 times something, but that's not going to work. I think this is the only way we get a nice, neat rectangle. I'd like it to be a square, but I don't think we can, right? If I do one more down like this, there's no point at which we have a hundred. Ninety-one? What the hell? Oh, what's the multiple? Seven. Yeah, well, that's definitely not a multiple of 100. We needed only 90, though, so 98? I don't know. I kind of like the idea of having 100. That's 120. That's, that's 100. Okay. Um, so it's going to be like steam, water, steam, water, steam, water. If I remember correctly, in K2, you always end up with one turbine too much or less. Well, this isn't one of the, like, golden ratios of the game. This is just... We just happen to have just under 90 gigawatts peak power for our coronal mass ejection heading for Granis. At least if you go with symmetrical di is design, indeed. Mazzle Fazzle. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, we're going to need room for lighted substations, I am just remembering. Let's see. We can't quite touch four of them. But we only need like that. It's going to ruin the perfect fit with the uh, large storage tanks. Bruh. Why you got to be like this? I think this is probably basically the same layout as we did on Nalvis, except that we don't have water output. Yep, pretty much the same. Awful lot of steam storage here, though. There's 150k tank for each turbine. That is a lot. Okay. Not that I mind. So, how many is this? 120. And this? This is 90. That's actually theoretically exactly what we need. My 4x4 condenser reactor produces roughly 1.2 gigawatt. Indeed. Uh, I think it's 1.5 for regular turbines. It's actually crazy with K2. Not that I mind. And come to think of it, we could probably connect like this. What the? Oh, I put these in the wrong place. Okay. That goes there, that goes there. That goes there. And then this one... No, that, that, that pattern could repeat indefinitely. So let's, uh, let's confirm. 
if we put in, I think that's the input, steam at 500 degrees. Uh, we should see the correct the correct fluids in the correct places. Does indeed do one point five gigawatt. Indeed. Uh, I kind of want to like flip this just so it's uh, sort of more symmetrical. Yeah, I like that better. Where is it even... How is it even making the water? There's not. There's no power consumers. Oh, yes there are. There's the lighted substations. Uh, apparently it's not daytime here. Sneaky. All right, cool. Uh, but yeah, it looks like it looks like that's all correct. That's pretty neat and tidy. And then we just add um, some electric boilers to make the five hundred degree steam. And I would say. Well, no, I am going to say um, that we should limit input to these based on an accumulator. Uh, even though we need to hurry up and get... How much? Whoops. Uh, we need to get 71 gigajoules of power stored um, before the CME. Um, but I don't want to put all of our power into this. Uh, like, I don't want to pull it all in at night time and then there's a media that we don't have the power to shoot down. How quickly can this consume? Why is rate calc all the way up there? Uh, 334 water per second is not that fast. I think this layout is fine. And we'll put a steel pump um, next to an accumulator that won't actually be there Uh, and we're basically just going to say if accumulator charge greater than, let's say, 70%. I want it to be a little bit higher a priority than the core mining drills. How long does your CME last? Not long, I think. Uh, two minutes. I think it's always two minutes. Yeah, we've got just under 23 hours. Uh, to accumulate 71 gigajoules of power to stop it. So, I think that'll be the first thing we do tomorrow. Let's blueprint this thing. I think that's looking pretty good. Um, how many of these do I have? No. Yeah, there we go. 90 gigawatt uh, NTCME. Yeah, let's just call it steam battery. We don't care how much it can store. It can obviously store a lot. Um, but I'm more... I'll define this based on the peak. And we'll put that in... K2SE over here, I guess. Fantastic. Alright, uh, 
I think that's going to do it for today. One last check of how our production looks. Uh, Argo rocket section. That's definitely trending upward. Have you published a condenser nuclear setup yet? For K2SE? No. This is this will be the first build with um uh with condenser turbines. Do you use silos for filling trains or what are those things? They are bulk rail loaders and unloaders. And the mod is called exactly that, bulk rail uh loaders, I think. Oh you can see it there on the right. Bulk rail loader. Take care, Evil Plur. Thanks for hanging out. Data Gnome as well, and everyone else. Bal Balinor. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well also. Take care. Uh, let's see who's streaming the old Factorio. It's a Diablo. It's a Zemultus again. Shellion Tuck. Uh, with the weird avatar... We got two speedrunners. I think I raided Diablo relatively recently. Uh, you know what? I often see Zamaltus online. I haven't raided him that often. Let's let's drop by. Thanks for the part that I caught. You're welcome. <laughs> Hope you can catch more next time. Fat boy, not so slim. Take care. And uh, see you all tomorrow. Purpose. I need to really go and just don't soon because it's pretty.